Hello, my name is Whitney. Welcome to my channel, Witness. Um, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I am interested in the intersection of the US, uh, the US legal system and the Church of Scientology policy um, as a religion as well. Today, I will be reading the first amended complaint uh, for damages and demand for jury trial um, and this was filed by Ms. Leah Remini uh, against the Church of Scientology. For those of you outside of the United States, Ms. Leah Remini, you might know from um, a series called uh, The Aftermath. And then also um, she's been a very vocal, outspoken um, person against the, the Church of Scientology in the past. Ms. Remini's original complaint and statement, um, the, the original court document, and then she she submitted her own statement on that same day. That was filed on um, August 2nd of 2023. And then um, she also published that first complaint, the original complaint to her Substack account. And I believe it is still there if you want to go visit and subscribe to uh, Leah Remini's Substack uh, account. Recently, uh, Ms. Remini's legal team has acquired additional evidence. Um, there has been some. There have been some videos about this on both um, channels for uh, Aaron Smith Levin and also Mike Rinder. Um, so you know, talks about fair game and things like that. Additional uh, information has then uh, prompted the legal team to file a first amended complaint for uh, for damages and a demand for jury trial. This one was filed on the 29th of August, uh, 2023, this year. That case number is in California. It is 23 STCV 18300. Um, I'm going to be reading the version of Ms. Remini's complaint, which is from uh, Deadline. Uh, I'm not familiar with Deadline, but it does have the legal filed uh, complaint, the first amended complaint. So I'm going to read that one. Um, please be well. I'm going to be um, reading some of this, and I'm probably not going to read some of the names. Some of the names of the people may be witnesses or maybe minor children uh, when the incidents occurred, things like that. So I might just jump over names. Um, there are a lot of footnotes in this document. This is a long document. Um, law nerds out there, you might wanna ratchet the playback speed up to like 1.5 to, um, for those of, of you who are ex-scientologists, um, remember that you can toggle playback speed higher, lower, if I speak too fast, too slowly, um, that kind of stuff. This is a 68 page complaint. It's it's a rather long complaint. Uh, so please, um, knowing that this is going to be a long complaint, it's probably gonna be over two hours of reading. Please be sure to like check underneath for chapters and things like that, because after the video is finally edited and posted, I'll have chapter markings in there. If you want to jump straight to a cause of action, I'll have all of the causes of actions uh, chaptered out. Um, thank you very much. Um, this document has a little bit of a structure that has a lot of background about Scientology. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, so here you can see that we're looking at the... Um, the amended complaint that was filed on uh, August 29th of 2023. Uh, above you have all of the attorneys for plaintiff Ms. Leah Remini. Um, and again, uh, I apologize, the source of this document is from a website called Deadline. Um, so that has the watermark throughout, um, but it is uh, electronically filed. We have this uh, this bumper here for the actual court filing uh, information. Superior Court for the State of California in and for the County of Los Angeles. Leah Remini, plaintiff, versus David Miscavige, Church of Scientology International, 
and Religious Technology Center defendants. Okay, this is case number 23STCV18300. You can search for this on um, blah, 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 lacourt.org, case number. Um, assigned to the Honorable Randolph M. Hammock, Department 49. First amended complaint for damages and demand for jury trial. Um, these are each of the causes of action that are listed here that Ms. Remini has included in her uh, filing. Uh, the first one is civil harassment. Second one is stalking uh, per California Code Section 1708.7, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Uh, number four, tortious interference with contractual relationship. Number five, intentional interference with prospective economic advantage. Uh, number six, defamation and defamation per se. Uh, number seven is defamation by implication. Number eight is false light. Uh, and number nine is, it looks like a declaratory, it's asking for a declaratory judgment um, based on California Code of Civil Procedure Section 1060. And a jury trial is demanded. Um, and we know that jury trials are always good for people, um, uh, for ex-Scientologists trying to challenge uh, the church. Um, I don't believe that Scientology have, has ever come out good on a jury trial in the past. Plaintiff Leah Remini, complaining of the defendants, David Miscavige, Church of Scientology International and Religious Technology Center, herein by her attorneys, respectfully sets forth and alleges as follows. Nature of the action. Beginning in the mid-1960s, the Church of Scientology, Scientology, through its founder and leader, L. Ron Hubbard, institutionalized a series of retaliatory activities to be taken against individual, organization, business, or government that Scientology deems to be an enemy or suppressive person. Reflected in hundreds of published directives, Office of Special Affairs, OSA, uh, Network Orders, HCOPL, which are Hubbard Communication Office Policy Letters, with a footnote, HCOBS's Hubbard Communications Office Bulletin, another footnote, and executive directives. These policies made obliteration of Scientology's enemies and are commonly referred to as attackers under the banner of what was termed, quote, fair game. Let's look at these. Uh, we have a couple of footnotes here around the communication policy letter and the office bulletins. Oh, it says that uh, HCO is communication arm of Scientology responsible for disseminating orders, policies, and other directives throughout Scientology. And number two, footnote two, is HCOBs dictate how to think about and handle anyone who speaks negatively of Scientology. Suppressive persons are also referred to, among other names, as attackers, merchants of chaos, merchants of fear, antisocial personalities, anti-scientologists, anti-psychotics, uh, I'm sorry, psychotics, just psychotic, squirrels, uh, cancer of society, criminals, and bigots. These uh, classifications laid out by L. Ron Hubbard's directives justify the destruction of suppressive persons. One does not need to be a Scientologist or a former Scientologist to be on Scientology's quote, enemy list. Um, on March 7th, 1965, Hubbard issued a policy letter on suppressive acts, which are defined as acts or omissions undertaken to knowingly suppress, reduce, or impede Scientology or Scientologists, end quote. Such suppressive acts include reporting crimes to law enforcement or government agencies advocating for victims of Scientology or public disavowal 
of Scientology or Scientologists writing anti-Scientology letters to the press or giving anti-Scientology or anti-Scientologist evidence to the press or testifying as a hostile witness against Scientology in public. The policy letter continues, quote, suppressive acts are clearly those covert or overt acts knowingly calculated to reduce or destroy the influence or activities of Scientology or prevent case gains or continued Scientology success and activity on the part of a Scientologist. As persons or groups that would do such a thing, such a thing act out of self-interest only to the detriment of all others. They cannot be granted the rights and beingness, ordinarily accorded rational beings, and so place themselves beyond any consideration for their feelings or well-being. On December 12, uh, I'm sorry, December 2nd, 1966, L. Ron Hubbard issued an executive order stating, A, people who attack Scientology are criminals. B, that if one attacks Scientology, he gets investigated for crimes. And C, if one does not attack Scientology, despite not being with it, one is safe, unquote. On March 28th, 1972, Hubbard wrote a paper titled Counter Attack Tactics, uh, principled upon the idea that when PR and legal find themselves engaged in handling attacks, intelligence has failed. Counterattack tactics laid out the, quote, plan referred to as three-channel handling to attack those who speak out against Scientology's abuses and advocate for themselves and others. The plan requires identifying the instigator and then using three different channels or tactics when identified or even suspected as the instigator, draw up a project and cost him his job. <clears throat> Quote, draw up a second project at once to, to survey and discover what the person really is defending and threaten it effectively. And the next is, quote, execute the projects rapidly, end quote, and then, quote, on achieving success, inform PR so that PR can call off the PR counterattack and capitalize on any information gained if it does not expose intelligence, end quote. And, quote, inform legal so legal can replan and utilize the information also gained to mop up, end quote. These tactics are to be implemented by the Office of Special Affairs or OSA, previously Scientology's Guardian Office or GEO. Okay, so after Guardian's Office, there is a footnote. Uh, the Guardian's Office was established in 1966, and its initial mission was to protect the interests of Scientology, monitor Scientologists and gather information on individuals and organizations deemed enemies of Scientology. The Guardian's office was disbanded in 1983, and the bulk of its previous functions were then assigned to OSA. Uh, OSA is also referred to as Department 20, or Scientology's Organization Board. On January 10, 1991, HCO issued a revised policy letter reinforcing that publicly departing Scientology is a high crime, the highest offense against Scientology. Anyone who publicly leaves Scientology is automatically declared a suppressive person. Actions against suppressive persons are primarily carried out by members of C organization, commonly referred to as the C org, who belong to OSA, uh, which handles Scientology's internal security and outside legal affairs and serves as Scientology's intelligence and spying operation. The Sea Org serves as Scientology clergy, clergy, and runs all Scientology organizations. The Sea Org offers a specialized college type course um, to become fully hatted um, invest officer 
uh, for OSA or a Department of Special Affairs investigator commissioned to address and neutralize disclosure of Scientology's conduct. Okay, so we have a footnote around college type course number four, the training course uh, Department of Special Affairs Investigations Officer full hat check sheet, unquote. Last four weeks, five days each week from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and consists of reading, writing, and demonstrations to prove complete understanding of the directives taught. Okay, so that's a training course for um, a fully hatted invest officer. The Sea Org also maintains and controls a sophisticated internal ethics and justice system that governs every Scientology member. Through its operatives and agents, OSA draws up counterattack tactics, handlings, and tracks, monitors and directs retaliation campaigns, campaigns and ruinous litigation against whistleblowers, survivors of Scientology, and anyone else who exposes Scientology's unlawful activities. In essence, it is the department tasked with executing operations against suppressive persons or attackers at the direction of defendant Miscavige, who has commanded Scientology since L. Ron Hubbard's death. And then after L. Ron Hubbard's death, we have another footnote, which says, Declaration of Mike Rinder, executed in Pinellas County, Florida, December 3rd, 2013. Rinder, a high-ranking Scientologist from the age of six, and until June 2007, served for an extended period as head of the Office of Special Affairs, OSA. In this role, he provided David Miscavige with daily reports on every legal case, media action, and investigation happening worldwide, and created invest reports for Miscavige, which included uh, summaries of ongoing activities of private investigators and intelligence operations working against Scientology attackers. Oh, sorry. Scientology policy requires members to determine to combat. Scientology policy requires members to determine to combat attackers by finding out, quote, what the person is seeking to protect and threaten that, unquote, including family and, quote, create scenarios that will cost someone their job by manufacturing false evidence against them, end quote. After Rinder escaped Scientology in 2007, he was subjected to these attacks himself, included, including via an extensive campaign of intimidation, spying, stalking, and harassment that continues today. These policies and directives are not only carried out by the Sea Org under direction of David Miscavige, but OSA also activates civilian, non-staff Scientologists and non-Scientologists allied with Scientology to carry out the operations launched by OSA. Scientology has hundreds of policies and directives called, among other things, public image, safe pointing, and special zone plan that relate to infiltration of law enforcement and government agencies through their front groups and social betterment programs to deter investigation of Scientology. There's another footnote, footnote six, which says HCO Bulletin, uh, 23rd June of 1960, uh, this is quoting something called the Special Zone Plan. Uh, it looks like a direct Hubbard uh, policy. The suppressive person slash fair game doctrine and OSA network orders are laid out in internal Scientology directives that describe the actions to be taken to destroy its perceived enemies. When one is deemed a suppressive person, that enemy, that enemy is then fair game as per L. Ron Hubbard's directives and the directives of Scientology, that suppressive persons may be deprived of property, property injured by any means, by any Scientology Scientologist without any discipline of the Scientologist. 
and may be tricked, sued, or lied to, or destroyed. Now, again, this is quoting something that looks like a direct quote from a Hubbard, yes, a, a Hubbard policy letter in footnote seven. The letters and orders that comprise the handling of suppressive persons and fair game lay out the rules of engagement for OSA operatives, all Scientologists and their allies that must be followed with precision until the attacker is, part of, uh, is put out of commission by Scientology's operation. Okay, starting at number 14 here, one order entitled, quote, Target Defense provides, quote, one cuts off enemy communications, funds, and connections. He deprives the enemy of political advantages, connections, and power. He takes over enemy territory. He raids and harasses on a thought plane, press, public opinion, governments, et cetera. Okay, so another quote. Um, you guys can look at that footnote if you'd like to. Another directive entitled, quote, Battle Tactics directs, quote, the prize is public opinion where press is concerned. The only safe public opinion to head for is they love us and are in a frenzy uh, of hate against the enemy. This means standard wartime propaganda is what one is doing, complete with atrocity, war crime trials, the lot. Don't give the enemy breathing space. And then there's another footnote, footnote number nine. Now, this is one of those legal play pages where the footnotes have completely taken over I'm not going to, as much as I love footnotes, I'm not going to read these footnotes. However, I do recommend uh, very good documentation on the actual policy letters, orders from Hubbard um, himself on how to handle enemies. The ultimate purpose of handling of suppressive persons or attackers is to, quote, totally restrain and muzzle, obliterate and ruin utterly any individual they deem an enemy. Scientology directs followers to spot who is attacking us, start feeding lurid blood, sex, crime, actual evidence on the attackers to the press. Don't ever tamely submit to an investigation of us. Make it rough, rough on attackers all the way. Again, these are more footnotes. Um, Expressive person policies have been and remain the policy and practice of Scientology, even to this day. Indeed, defendants' use of fair game has been acknowledged by courts in California for many years. And then uh, footnote uh, 15 has a really nice listing of uh, the different court findings in California where, uh, you know, these fair game proceedings were, were, were spoken about. One Los Angeles uh, Superior Court judge observed that in addition to violating and abusing its own members' civil rights, the organization over the years with its fair game doctrine has harassed and abused those persons not in the Church of Scientology whom it perceives as enemies. Another footnote. Another opinion, opinion summarized a sample of Scientology's recent fair game tactics. And this is a quote. Um, um, from the case Bixler versus Superior Court for California, this is cited for um, the allegations only. Plaintiffs allege Scientology's agents committed the following acts against them, surveilled them, hacked their security systems, filmed them, chased them, hacked the, their email, killed and attempted to kill their pets, tapped their phones, incited others, to harass them, threatened to kill them, broke their locks, broke into their cars, ran them off the road, posted fake ads purporting to be from them, soliciting anal sex from strangers, broke their windows, set the outside of their home on fire, went through their trash, and poisoned trees in their yards. This conduct was alleged to be pursuant to Scientology's policies and procedures. 
according to plaintiff's complaint, Scientology's directives are that suppressive persons are to be silenced by whatever means necessary. Scientology instructs members to, quote, damage the person's professional reputation, file frivolous lawsuits, and harass and surveil the enemy. Scientology's policies and procedures encourage, encourage or instruct followers to, quote, ruin the individual utterly. Again, that's footnote number 17, if you'd like to follow up on that court case. On the in the past 70 years, Scientology, via defendants, has conducted countless sophisticated, well-funded, and brutal operations against oppressive persons that have spanned every decade and many countries. Scientology has also undertaken smaller but still devastating operations against anyone or any group that it has labeled suppressive or fair game. Here, defendants have undertaken a campaign a campaign to ruin and destroy the life and livelihood of Leah Remini, a former Scientologist of nearly 40 years, a two-time Emmy Award-winning producer, actress, and New York Times best-selling author after she was de deemed a suppressive person and declared fair game by Scientology in 2013 when she publicly departed Scientology, a suppressive a suppressive act as laid out by Scientology directives. For the past 10 years, Ms. Remini has been stalked, surveilled, harassed, threatened, intimidated, and moreover has been the victim of intentional malicious and fraudulent rumors via hundreds of Scientology controlled and coordinated social media accounts that exist solely to intimidate and spread misinformation. Scientology has elevated the reach of some of these posts by using its tax-exempt funds to pay social media companies like Twitter to promote these posts. By paying to promote these posts and elevate them on Twitter, defendants demonstrate that these posts are not the work of a rogue Scientologist, but part of a coordinated campaign to follow long-held policy and destroy Ms. Remini. Defendants have also incessantly harassed, threatened, intimidated, and embarrassed Ms. Remini's family members, friends, colleagues, and business associates, causing her to lose personal relationships, business contracts, and other business opportunities. Defendants have caused Ms. Remini significant and ongoing economic harm and have forced her to endure a new but never normal life in which Scientology's surveillance, abuse, and lies are the punishing, inescapable daily cost of exercising her free amendment right and moral duty to speak out about Scientology's conduct. Scientology's policies regarding suppressive persons in fair game are not religious doctrine. They are old school, mob style tactics, modernized and amplified and weaponized by Scientology's far reaching network, which goes beyond just social media. <clears throat> Despite spending nearly 10 years of her life under constant threat and assault by defendants as a result of her public departure from Scientology, Ms. Remini has worked tirelessly to advocate for current Scientologists, former members of Scientology and non-Scientologists non who have bravely spoken out against Scientology or supported Scientology survivors and whistleblowers. Ms. Remini brings this action to recover compensatory and punitive damage, damages for the enormous economic and psychological harm that defendants have inflicted upon her to remediate the harm that has been caused and to punish and deter defendants from continuing their unlawful campaign of harassment and intimidation. Again, we have footnote number 19. Um, I believe this is a, um, uh, Leah Remedy does not assert and expressly disclaims any claims relating to Scientology's conduct while she was a member, which Scientology maintains are subject to arbitration pursuant to the enrollment 
agreements with Scientology's members. Okay. Now, for me, I believe this is an important thing to um, to to realize. Um, so, uh, this case does not cover anything for the time span when Ms. Remini was inside of Scientology. She was inside of Scientology beginning at a very young age, I believe uh, 13 years old. Um, and she worked in Scientology for, for quite a while. This case has nothing to do with those that time when she was in Scientology. This is completely after she had left. Everything that she's alleging in this document has taken place after she left her religion. Most importantly, she seeks injunctive relief to end Scientology's policies against oppressive persons so that current and former Scientologists and others who wish to expose Scientology's abuses, including journalists and advocates, may feel free to hold Scientology accountable without the fear that they will be threatened into silence. This lawsuit does not challenge Scientology's ability to defend itself through legal means. Okay, we're gonna get into the parties now um, in this lawsuit. Plaintiff Leah Remini is a resident of the state of California. Defendant Church of Scientology International, or CSI, is a California corporation, uh, which at all material times was doing business in the county of Los Angeles, a state of California. CSI's primary place of business and headquarters is located in Los Angeles. Uh, CSI is controlled and directed by Defendant Miscavige directly and through officers and others who report to him. CSI is the licensee of Scientology's intellectual property, or IP, including trademarks and other IP owned and administered by Defendant Religious Technology Center. CSI, in turn, licensed licenses Scientology's IP to numerous other Scientology-affiliated entities and organizations with pay, which pay CSI licensing fees that it passes through to the owners of the IP, including Religious Technology Center. Defendant Religious Technology Center, or RTC, is a California corporation which at all material times was doing business in the county of Los Angeles, state of California. RTC's primary place of business and headquarters is located in Los Angeles. RTC is the principal management, security, and enforcement entity for Scientology. Pursuant to an assignment agreement with Scientology founder uh, L. Ron Hubbard, RTC owns, administers, and enforces certain IP rights, including Scientology's trademarks and rights in its so-called advanced tech, and it receives licensing fees paid for the use of those rights. And it receives licensing fees paid for the use of those rights, including their use in Scientology courses and course materials operating under Defendant Miscavige's uh, direction. Senior RTC officers oversee and direct the management of each of the other defendants listed herein. RTC and Miscavige also oversee and direct defendants' investigative and, policy and policing uh, operations, monitor members' behavior, and handle matters concerning discipline and punishment of members throughout all Scientology-affiliated entities, groups, and organizations. Defendant David Miscavige, quote, Miscavige is and at all material times was a resident of Los Angeles. Uh, Mr. Miscavige is believed to reside uh, in Los Angeles and his principal place of business is located in Los Angeles. Mr. Miscavige is the chairman of the board, quote, COB of the RTC and the de facto leader in all aspects and other named def defendants controlling and directing the activities of all defendant entities herein. <clears throat> Among other things, Mr. Miscavige personally directs and during the times relevant to this complaint did direct the management and operations of the other defendants, including the practices and conduct alleged herein. Jurisdiction and revenue. 
the court has jurisdiction over this action pursuant to California Code of Civil Procedure, uh, Section 410.10. Plaintiff seeks damages under the statutory and common law of the state of California for defendants' wrongful actions. Venue is proper in this court pursuant to California Code of Civil Procedure, Section 395, because A, some of the acts and transactions described herein occurred within this county. B, defendants are or were registered to do business in the state of California and or were doing business within this county. C, defendants did do business in this county and defendants' principal places of business are located in Los Angeles County. And D, defendant, uh, defendant Miscavige is an individual residing in this county. Okay, now we're going to factual allegations. Again, we're looking at this complaint uh, through the eyes of um, Ms. Remini and um, this is through the voice of, of her attorneys who are representing her in this case. So this is, is really going to be um, spoken in Leah Remini's voice. These, these are the allegations that she's bringing um, when, she when she mentions specific um, places and events. Um, I would guess that she has evidence available to bring forward to substantiate those claims. So we'll see here. These are the factual allegations. Again, there's some background about Scientology. If you're an ex-Scientologist, possibly some of this might be triggering, but um, uh, please use your own discretion. Factual allegations. A, Scientology background. Scientology was created by L. Ron Hubbard in 1952 following the publication of Dianetics, the modern science of mental health. Its practices are mandated uh, by the writings, thoughts, and teachings of Mr. Hubbard. These teachings are referred to as policies, quote, the tech, technology, and, quote, source. The words and teachings of L. Ron Hubbard are the law of Scientology and the law for Scientologists. The policies of L. Ron Hubbard cannot be changed, modified, or interpreted. In fact, it is a high crime in Scientology to in Scientology to dis to disobey the exact words and teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, no matter how antiquated, abhorrent, and illegal that they may be. Okay, there's a footnote. Again, this is another policy letter. Um, feel free to look that up. Scientology's authority with respect to its members is absolute precluding even a role by law enforcement. Defendants strictly forbid members from contacting the police to report any crimes committed by any practicing Scientologists, no matter how violent or heinous the crime, except when directed by Scientology as a part of operations against oppressive persons. Once again, a footnote there. Scientology trains its members how to lie to law enforcement. Scientologists are also forbidden from co uh, cooperating from law enforcement against other Scientologists and testifying against other Scientologists in court. Defendants also forbid Scientologists from seeking remedies in civil court against other Scientologists. The Church of Scientology is organized and operates through a global network of corporations, trusts, and unincorporated associations and organizations. Scientology's management is fully top-down with all principal entities and organizations controlled and managed under the direction of defendant Miscavige, whose authority is second only to deceased L. Ron Hubbard. Defendant Miscavige took control of Scientology in 1986 after L. Ron's death or L. Ron Hubbard's death. Defendant uh, Miscavige operates and manages and or controls RTC CSI, and the entire network of Scientology operations that fall beneath RTC and CSI. Defendant Miscavige, Defendant Miscavige is responsible for ensuring the standards, policies, and ethics of Scientology, including those related to suppressive persons and attackers of Scientology, are carried out. Defendant Miscavige receives daily reports on and directs the operations of each Scientology-affiliated entity 
and organization through command channels with built-in redundancies to ensure he receives complete and timely information about all aspects of defendant's operations, including that his directives are fully carried out without variance. He issues directives to every Scientology controlled entity and every Scientologist and also receives reports from OSA on its operations against suppressive, uh, suppressive persons. While every person who becomes an enemy of Scientology is fair game uh, and faces attacks from o uh, Scientology's OSA and RTC, Leah Remini is at the very top of Defendant Miscavige's list of Scientology's enemies. Next section is suppressive persons or attackers of Scientology. <clears throat> Scientology deems an individual a suppressive person if they, quote, actively seek to suppress or damage Scientology or a Scientologist by suppressive acts, uh, unquote. There's a footnote there. These are more policy letters, I believe, that they are quoting directly from. Suppressive acts are, quote, acts calculated to impede or destroy Scientology or a Scientologist, unquote. Uh, applicable to this case, examples of suppressive acts include, quote, public disavowal of Scientology or Scientologists in good standing with Scientology organizations, end quote, and, quote, public statements against Scientology, end quote. Additional uh, relevant suppressive acts include bringing civil suit against any Scientology organization or Scientologist performing welfare checks on family members of those who departed Scientology or reporting crimes by Scientology members to civil, to civil authorities. An individual engaged in any of these behaviors is deemed a suppressive person. Once deemed a suppressive person, the suppressive person is known as, quote, fair game and has no rights of any kind and must be silenced by whatever means necessary. Uh, a couple of different, uh, there's a couple of different footnotes there. One of particular interest that you might want to pause and zoom in on is the, um, it looks like a uh, declaration of Vicky as Naran, as, as Moran. Um, you might want to look at that. From time to, uh, from the time it was founded in 1953 to the present day, Scientology has inflicted terror on people and organizations it deems to be its enemies pursuant to its policies and directives. OSA operations consist of hundreds of directives written by L. Ron Hubbard. These directives are considered law for all Scientologists and supersede the laws of any country or state that a Scientologist lives in. Scientology believes their laws and justice codes are superior to real law and refer to the laws as uh, W law. W law is a, or W word, is a derogatory term Scientology uses to categorize a person who is not a Scientologist or any institution that is not under the full control of Scientology. One Scientology policy directs, quote, don't react to Scientology justice as though it were W word law. In society's courts, one is given the works. The truth has little bearing on the findings. A mean judge or clever attorney and small legal errors decide a lot of their cases. Uh, w word courts are like throwing dice. They're is huge cost and publicity and punishment uh, galore even for the innocent. So we must preserve our justice, end quote. <clears throat> the goal of OSA is to handle attackers or suppressive persons. The policy OSA implements aim to harass, scare, silence, or ruin utterly. Anyone who is considered a suppressive person to Scientology, the goal of the department is a silenced or muzzled attacker. The goal of the department is a silenced or muzzled attacker. 
Scientology's directives laid out as counterattack tactics teach the methods to use against individuals who are deemed suppressive or fair game. Quote, these persons can always lose their jobs. This is a point of vulnerability. If a person's job is not valuable to him, or if he cannot be made to cost his job, something can be found which he is seeking to protect and it can be threatened. Find out what the person considers valuable and use it for restraint, end quote. To this end, OSA operations target their objects, family, career, reputation, and personal security. Suppressive persons are, quote, critics of Scientology and OSA network orders are carried out by Scientology employees, civilian Scientologists, and agents hired by Scientology. This creates a far-reaching network dedicated to the destruction of Scientology's targets. Scientology keeps close track of the assets, skills, and networks of civilian Scientologists and agents associated with Scientology and its front groups so that it may deploy them in operations against suppressive persons or attackers. For example, a civilian Scientologist or one associated with a Scientologist or its front groups who has a cybersecurity company may be activated by Scientology for an operation to gain information to which defendants would not normally have access. That's creepy. Indeed, historically, defendants hire lawyers who have then hired private investigators. They may hire other private investigators to surveil, follow, videotape, and photograph individuals who have been deemed suppressive persons. But defendants do not limit their hiring practices to licensed private investigators. Um, there is another quote, or I'm sorry, a footnote number 28 here on this page. And it's, if you'd like to pause and read it, be my guest. Uh, it's quite long. Based on information and belief, operations against oppressive persons or attackers are paid for through Scientology's tax-exempt funds and under the false cloak of religion. Between the financial resources of Scientology and the hyper-dedication and direction of Scientologists, targets of these tactics cannot hope for a fair fight or even uh, to fight back at all. Once a target is declared suppressive and fair game, the target remains a focus of Scientology until the goal is reached, a silenced or muzzled attacker. Until the target, whistleblower, advocate, survivor, reporter, etc., has lost the ability to speak out, Scientology continues its pursuit. Even death may not spare a target from these attacks. Jeez. For example, though David Miscavige's father, Ron Miscavige, died in 2021, Scientology continues to maintain hundreds of websites dedicated to smearing him. When an individual is declared a suppressive person by defendant Miscavige, according to Scientology's directives, that individual is cut off from all contact with family members friends, and employers within Scientology, because any Scientologist who maintains contact with a suppressive person is also deemed guilty of a Scientology high crime and subject to punishment. Publicly declaring that a member has left Scientology is not the only offense subject to attacks. Scientology treats asking for a welfare check on a family member who is a member of Scientology questioning, speaking out, or speaking about, or posting Scientology beliefs, find, uh, filing lawsuit against or reporting a Scientologist, or even reading books or watching documentaries that inform the public of Scientology beliefs and abusive practices are uh, practices as violations of Scientology pra uh, policies. Sorry. Former members of Scientology can be labeled suppressive persons and subject to harassment, stalking, and other attacks for these activities. The abuse level at Ms. Remini is part of a broader policy and practice of intimidation, other subjects of defendants' suppressive person policies have included the United States government, including the Internal Revenue Service, 
the Federal Bureau of Investigation, United States Attorney Generals, there's a footnote there for that one, elected officials, and the medical, uh, the American Medical Association, the National Institute of Mental Health, published uh, Pulitzer Prize winning reporters, stand up comedians, cartoonists, university professors, district attorneys, judges, other law enforcement, social media users with as few as 10 followers, and a mother in Clearwater, Florida, who was concerned about her son's welfare, to name just a few. Though carried out as doctrine, the application of Scientology's practices, certainly as to those who, like Ms. Remini, have renounced membership, are contrary to law and subject to review by courts. The banner of religious freedom does not, and could not, give defendants license to intimidate, harass, and abuse laws who have exercised uh, those and abuse those who have exercised their right not to associate with Scientology. Religious freedom also does not allow defendants the right to intimidate and attack former Scientologists who act as whistleblowers to expose Scientology's wrongful conduct uh, towards them or others, nor does allow defendants to apply their laws to do the same to those who were never members. In addition to systematic and coordinated campaigns of harassment, including but not limited to stalking and invasion of privacy, defendants direct the creation of defamatory websites and social media accounts to spread lies and misinformation about those who unmask Scientology or tell their own stories of their own experiences as members these websites accuse those whistleblowers of lying about their own experiences in Scientology, or in the case of non-Scientologists, lying about Scientology, and publish a litany of defamatory assertions about them. Defendants have escalated their retaliation uh, tactics in order to damage their targets' uh, reputations as demanded by Scientology policies on suppressive persons and fair game. Agents of defendants pick targets, places of employment, residents, and neighborhoods with posters falsely accusing them of crime, such as child molestation, with the purpose of humiliating their targets and destroying their reputations and job prospects. Defendants' agents have uh, confronted targets outside their homes, workplaces, and in airports, falsely accusing them of wrongdoing. This harassment aims to create fear in those employing or associated with Scientology's enemies. The tactics used to silence and publish anyone deemed to be an enemy by Scientology, is, uh, by Scientology are well known within Scientology. Because of these tactics, Scientologists are not apt to report crimes while they are still members of Scientology. Sea Org members have gone to even more drastic uh, measures including drinking bleach and other methods of suicide rather than subject themselves to OSA operations as suppressive persons. Others who escape are forced to go into hiding, avoiding any communication with law enforcement, the press, or any former members of Scientology to avoid being attacked as fair game. Scientology's strictly followed policies on attack of suppressive persons were first carried out under the command of L. Ron Hubbard and the Guardian's office. After Hubbard's death in 1986, David Miscavige, OSA, and RTC continued strict implementation of these abusive policies. These directives laid out uh, these directives lay out the game plan and are carried out with precision by Scientology employees, civilian Scientologists, and uh, and non-Scientologists who agree to participate in the destruction of Scientology's target. The policies of Scientology were written by L. Ron Hubbard, who is the only source for Scientology's teachings and laws because Scientology relies solely on the writings and directives of Scientology for nearly every single matter in life. The actions of Scientology and the Scientologists are consistent 
as demanded and evidenced by the policies and directives and by their subsequent activities that follow those policies and directives. <clears throat> the only person who can change Hubbard's policies is L. Ron Hubbard. As a result, none of the laws that govern Scientology and Scientologists can ever be changed. If they were, it would lead to a crisis of confidence within Scientology because Scientologists believe that Hubbard is infallible and that his policies and teachings are perfect. As a result, suppressive person policies and fair game policies will never stop because Scientology's policies cannot be changed. It is up to outsiders, especially our legal system, to impose this change before more lives are destroyed by these policies and the leaders behind them. C, Leah Remini, Ms. Remini's indoctrination into Scientology. While this lawsuit con concerns what happened after Ms. Remini left Scientology, her experience in Scientology helps explain why Scientology has been determined to silence her and others. Beginning at the age of eight, uh, Ms. Remini effectively lost her mother as a parent when her mother joined Scientology. Ms. Remini's mother often left her two daughters alone so that she could devote herself to Scientology. At the age of 13, Ms. Remini and her sister were made to leave the only home they ever knew and were forced to join the Sea Org by their mother. By, as part of joining, they were forced to sign billion year contracts. Ms. Remini was deprived of a formal education or a normal childhood and made to perform manual labor and spend hours learning the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard. She was taught as a child to believe that her personal sacrifice would save the planet. Years of brainwashing and conditioning put Ms. Remini in a position where Scientology was the only reality for her. As with most Scientologists, Scientology was Ms. Remini's primary caretaker. She was a member of Scientology for over 35 years. During the period of time when Ms. Remini was a Scientologist, she was forced to pay for, pay for and undergo thousands of hours of Scientology training at substantial cost to her to move up what is known as Scientology's Bridge to Total Freedom. These training sessions took many forms of conditioning and abuse, which involved verbally, physically, and sexually abusive practices. One training technique known as bull baiting, quote unquote, placed her, a young girl, with an older male Scientologist who is required to find her, quote, buttons vulnerabilities that would bother her, uh, screamed expl expletives at her, made sexually suggestive remarks to her, and verbally abused her for hours in an effort to condition her to not react to abuse. Wow. These training routines, or uh, TRs, were required for all Scientologists, part of the are part of the procedures to condition Scientologists to accept abuse and inflict abuse without hesitation. These TRs rob minor children of their natural protective instincts and open them up to sexual, physical, and emotional abuse. Ms. Remini estimates she spent over $5 million over the course of her time as a Scientologist. These funds were spent on her so-called spiritual enlightenment, and those of her family members and friends. Approximately half of her funding was for services that she purchased uh, as from any other business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ms. Remini's donations also included giving to the International Association of uh, Scientologists or IAS, for which there is no exchange of Scientology services. The IAS is known as David Miscavige's war chest. Scientologists are required to prepay for their uh, services. And after Ms. Remini was declared a suppressive person, she was unable to obtain repayment of money she had in her and her family's Scientology accounts. 
While Ms. Remini was a Scientologist, giving millions of dollars to Scientology, serving as a public face for Scientology, recruiting people individually to join Scientology, helping to move Scientologists on their bridge, and donating to outside groups at the behest of Scientology, she frequently was held up as an example of a model Scientologist and praised repeatedly for her contributions. She was awarded commendations by David Miscavige, Tom Cruise, and by the very people who later attacked her in Scientology produced videos, despite repeatedly having been asked to appear in Scientology videos herself. As soon as she left and spoke out against Scientology, she was labeled by the organization she supported financially as an untrustworthy apostate as has been the case for staff members, Sea Org members, and other Scientologists who have left Scientology or who have spoken out for and for non-Scientologists who have made a joke about Scientology, reported crimes against or advocated for victims of Scientology. Scientology's campaign to destroy Ms. Remini began in 2006, seven years before she publicly left Scientology in the summer of 2013. This background is described solely to provide context for Scientology's attacks on Ms. Remini after she publicly left Scientology. Okay, this is the wedding incident. In 2006, Ms. Remini and her husband attended the wedding of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes in Italy. Cruz, David Miscavige's best friend, is essentially second in command in Scientology. It is a high crime in Scientology to criticize him in any way. In 2004, David Miscavige told an audience of Scientologists at a gala, at a gala in England that Cruz was, quote, the most dedicated Scientologist I know, end quote. The Cruz Holmes wedding was billed within Scientology as, quote, the wedding of the century uh, because Mr. Cruz's status within Scientology and how important this event was, Ms. Remini was sh shocked to discover uh, that David Miscavige's wife, Michelle, or Shelley Miscavige, was nowhere to be found. Miscavige held the title of, quote, assistant, of, uh, assistant to chairman of the board COB, and her job was const was to constantly record everything he said uh, that a team of secretaries would later transcribe his words and orders for dissemination uh, throughout Scientology. When Ms. Remini asked a group of Scientology executives and Tom Cruise's personal handlers, Tom Davis, Jessica Fessback, and Javier Ruiz, where is Shelley? She was immediately admonished by the group, despite the fact that she and Ms. Scavage and Ms. Miscavige were good friends. Ms. Remini witnessed other behavior at the wedding that set off red flags for her, including unethical contacts between various Scientology executives and others at the wedding, which she understood to be forbidden by Scientology teachings. While in Italy, Ms. Remini called her Scientology assistant, Melinda Brownstone, and asked her to type up a series of internal reports that Remini was taught to write, known as knowledge reports, or KRs, uh, sharing her concerns about the behavior she had witnessed and expressing her concerns about Ms. Miscavige's health and safety. Ms. Remini dictated these reports over the phone to her assistant, um, who wrote and submitted these reports because from a young age, Ms. Remini had been brainwashed into believing that by filing reports like this, she was helping Scientology and saving her religion. When Ms. Remini returned to Los Angeles, she was ordered to go to Clearwater, Florida, to the Flag Land Base Building, also known as FLAG. FLAG is considered the spiritual headquarters of Scientology, where Scientologists receive top-level services that cannot be obtained anywhere else. Ms. Remini was told that before she could receive the services she had planned on getting there, she would undergo a quick ethics cycle. This purportedly quick ethics cycle was one of her life's worst nightmares. 
Upon arrival, Ms. Remini was presented with dozens of internal reports from Scientologists complaining about her behavior at the wedding. It was clear to Ms. Remini that she was being punished for asking where Shelley Miscavige was and for filing reports on David Miscavige and others. Ms. Remini was held at flag for four months while she was put through a process that cost her hundreds of thousands of dollars and nearly led to her have and nearly led her to have a psychotic breakdown. The, Scient the Scientology process is called the Truth Rundown, which is usually only reserved for Sea Org members. Bruce Hines, a top-level Scientology case supervisor, said he was only aware of one other civilian Scientologist put through the Truth Rundown process. David Miscavige subsequent, uh, subsequently acknowledged that it was wrong to have subjected uh is to have subjected Ms. Remini to the truth rundown and returned at least some of her money. Oh, that's, that's nice of him. Simply put, truth rundown is a form of psychological torture meant to rewrite the target's memories. It is used by Scientology when Sea Org members report an ethical issue within the organization, and Scientology wants to erase their memories and implant new memories. After months of psychological torture, Ms. Remini was nearing the point of psychotic breakdown. She finally gave in, rescinded all of her reports, and admitted that she was the problem in this situation, despite it not being true. Finally, Ms. Remini was allowed to leave FLAG and return to Los Angeles, where she was forced to lie to her colleagues, uh, colleagues friends, and family about what happened while she was in Florida. Ms. Remini was made to make amends at flag, not only to David Miscavige, but to Tom Cruise. For example, she was forced to donate money to name a seat in a theater after, Sur after Surrey Cruise and was to raise money for a donation to Scientology causes led by Tom Cruise. After reports of terrible abuse emerged from Scientology's international base, Golden Era Productions, in Riverside County, Remini endured another six months of punishment for looking on the internet and asking questions about the abuse. After her punishment, Ms. Remini resigned from Scientology in 2013. After leaving Scientology, Ms. Remini filed a missing person report on Shelley, on Shelley Miscavige, who has not been seen in public for 17 years. Uh, next section is Leaving Scientology, Fair Game. In 2013, Ms. Remini formally and publicly left Scientology and became an outspoken, outspoken public advocate for victims of Scientology. As a result, beginning in 2013 and continuing to this day, Defendant Miscavige and the other defendants began to level one of their most coordinated and malicious assaults against Ms. Remini as part of their policies related to suppressive persons and attackers. Defendants enlisted dozens of current and former Scientologists to record videotaped messages in Scientology production studios to make disparaging and false claims against Ms. Remini, including false and defamatory statements that she was abusive to her mother and daughter and that she is a racist. These videos continue to be posted at those locations on the web. To discredit Ms. Remini's truthful public comments regarding defendants, defendants also used and manipulated Ms. Remini's estranged and now deceased father, George Remini and his third wife, to make false statements about Ms. Remini, including that she is a liar and that she only wanted her name in the news and that she would not help to pay for his cancer treatments, that she turned her back on her half-sister when she was in the hospital, that she ransacked her dying grandmother's apartment, and that she has no morals. These false statements were posted to websites and created, uh, were posted to websites created and controlled by defendants and continue to be promoted or reposted by Scientology. The statements Ms. Remini made were unquestionably false and contradicted uh, by email communications and financial records. 
defendants never approached Ms. Remini to seek comment or fact check the false allegations her father made about her on camera. Additionally, Ms. Remini never had a relationship of any sort with her father's third wife and only briefly met her twice. Yet Scientology uses uh, Dana Remini as a reliable source of information about Ms. Remini. In 2015, Ms. Remini released, quote, Troublemaker, Surviving Hollywood and Scientology. It's her book, a memoir exposing Scientology's abusive conduct, went on to become a New York Times bestseller. Uh, Ms. Remini's critical and successful Memoir further escalated defendants' abusive tactics against her. While Ms. Remini was in New York in 2015 to promote her book, she became aware that she was being followed by private investigators hired by defendants. These private investigators followed Ms. Remini to and from her hotel and to and from all interviews and media appearances. Defendants hired surveillance consistent with Scientology directives and was so intimidating that made Ms. Remini fear for her uh, physical safety. As a result, uh, Ms. Remini, for the first time in her life, despite being a public figure, was forced to hire private bodyguards to ensure her safety during her book tour. In addition to physically following and harassing Ms. Remini during her book tour, defendants sent disparaging and threatening letters to third parties who were promoting Ms. Remini's book including but not limited to ABC News Senior Vice President. Uh, there's two people listed there. Uh, the intent of these letters was to silence Miss Remini, damage her reputation, and in turn her ability to earn income from her book. In 2015, Ms. Remini was set to appear on Anderson Cooper's CNN show to promote Troublemaker, her book. Due to Scientology's history of aggressive litigiousness, the interview was pre-taped so that it could be vetted by CNN's legal department. Before the interview began, Mr. Cooper warned Ms. Remini that the interview might not air. Mr. Cooper told Ms. Remini that when he aired a five-part series on physical abuse being perpetrated by David Miscavige, um, quote, Scientology, A History of Violence, he and his producers faced so many OSA attacks that they might not be willing to face a new storm of harassment. Since Cooper's series aired in 2010, he has never broadcast another story about Scientology. To this day, defendants continue to maintain attack websites against Mr. Cooper and his producers. From 2016 through 2019, Ms. Remini created, produced, and hosted the award-winning A&E documentary series, Leah Remini, Scientology and the Aftermath, quote, Aftermath. This documentary series told the stories of former members who were bankrupt, physically abused, molested, and raped by Scientologists and how the organization covered up those crimes. They told the stories of those families who had been destroyed by Scientology's disconnection pro uh, policies and those who suffered retaliation for reporting crimes to non-Scientology authorities. The documentary series won two Emmy Awards, a Producers Guild Award, Independent Documentary Award, Truth to Power Award, two Gracie Awards, Alliance for Women in Media Foundation, and the Barbara Blaine Trailblazer Award from Child USA, again intensifying defendants' efforts to silence and discredit her. Scientologists have also attacked the president and chairman of a &E Networks Group by creating websites on him and a and &E. Due to this harassment, a and &E was reluctant to put themselves and their employees, their advertisers, at risk out of fear of further retaliation from Scientology and their agents. Contributors appearing on the series were thereafter harassed and stalked by Scientology, including through disparaging websites that were posted almost instantly. Scientology was provided an opportunity to comment in every episode, yet defendants have done everything in their power to sabotage Ms. Remini's The Aftermath series. Between November 2016 and February 2019, defendants 
designed an operation to organize and force practicing Scientologists to write at least 500 letters seeking the cancellation of Ms. Remini's show. These letters were sent to the network heads at a &E, the CEO of Disney, and innumerable, adverti innumerable advertisers and sponsors of the series, including Disney, Yahoo, Nissan, Coca-Cola, Nestle, and Expedia, to name just a few. Between April and May 2018, defendants, through the President's Office of Scientology Celebrity Center in Hollywood, organized a meeting of Scientology celebrities and other Scientologists active in the entertainment industry. In that meeting, attendees were drilled on how to attack Ms. Remini's credibility based on lies using talking points that Scientology wrote. A copy of that document shows that the attendees were told to state to others that Ms. Remini's contributors, contributors, uh, survivors, and whistleblowers were criminals. This blanket smear was uh, followed by the false suggestion that the National Enquirer was more credible than Ms. Remini's documentary series. Additionally, attendees were told to say that Ms. Remini paid survivors and whistleblowers to appear in her documentary series, which is also false. In addition to the hundreds of letters, Scientologists at the urging of defendants, and in, court, in accordance with their suppressive person OSA network directives, HCOBs, HCOPLs, and fair game policies, OSA created a front group called the Interfaith Alliance to create the appearance that religious leaders found the series one of religious bigotry. Okay, <clears throat> this group, none of whom were actual clergy and all of whom were Scientologists, uh, stood outside of the a &E corporate offices and picketed, uh, demanding cancellation of Ms. Remini's documentary series, falsely claiming that she had incited bigotry and hate crimes, including, but not limited to, murder. Okay. Defendants and defendants' operatives also engaged in efforts to harass and threaten anyone involved in the aftermath, most notably ex-Scientologists who were whistleblowers and survivors of Scientology's abuse who agreed to be interviewed for the documentary series. Defendants then organized the harassment of non-Scientologists like producers, crew members, support staff, editors, and their family members who were not involved in the documentary series. They endured ongoing harassment by Scientologists. Some of them continue to be harassed to this day via email, texts, and phone calls to their homes, as well as their family members' homes. Agents of Scientology who falsely claim to be journalists also call these individuals to solicit false information about Ms. Remini for Scientology's attack websites against her. After the aftermath ended, Scientology publicly took credit for having secured its cancellation. In 2017, defendants continued their, their campaign to harass and discredit Ms. Remini. For instance, when Ms. Remini appeared on the Conan O'Brien show in January 25th, 2017, to promote aftermath, defendants' operatives sent Conan O'Brien Conan O'Brien a personal letter criticizing Ms. Remini and claiming that Remini was only speaking out against Scientology for the fame, money, and attention. Mr. O'Brien commented that he had never before received a letter of this character in his 24 years of hosting late night talk shows. Defendants also began to intentionally and fraudulently accuse Ms. Remini and her aftermath series of inciting, of inciting hate crimes. In 2016, defendants, well aware of the falsehoods being leveled at Ms. Remini, accused Ms. Remini in tweets and on their websites of causing a man, Mr. Brandon, whose parents were former Scientologists, to throw a rock through a window at um, the Los Angeles Office of Scientology. This man, who was forced to disconnect from his brother and parents, was in the midst of a mental health crisis. Scientology policies ban any sort of psychiatric or psychological treatment. 
Both this man and his family have publicly stated that Ms. Remini had nothing to do with this episode, yet defendants continue to stand by their fraudulent accusations and continue to disseminate this false information on social media and on its websites to this day. And on January 11, 2019, defendants falsely and maliciously accused Ms. Remini and the aftermath of inciting the brutal murder of a 24-year-old Taiwanese Scientologist at its Australian headquarters. This man was working as a, a security guard and was escorting a woman to begin her program to join the Sea Org when the woman's 16-year-old son uh, grabbed and murdered this young man. Without any basis, defendants wrote letters to the president of A&E alleging that, quote, the murderer was incited by Annie and the Leah Remini slash Mike Rinder series, end quote. Ms. Remini has publicly condemned the boy's actions, yet Scientology and Scientology operatives with over 200 Twitter accounts continually tweet and retweet intentionally false and libelous information regarding this inf incident. A sampling of the tweets is below. And here you can see, if you'd like to pause um, this is a tweet sent by somebody named uh, Hate Monitor. Um, yeah. There's one tweet, um, and then here's another tweet. This one is has more, uh, it's also from the Hate Mon Monitor. During the years in which Aftermath aired on A&E, defendants continued to stalk and harass Miss Remini. In 2017, defendants hired International Investigative Group Limited, or it looks like IIG, a company comprised of private investigators to surveil and follow Ms. Remini while she was in New York filming, filming the 2018 movie Second Act and her TV series that aired from 2016 to 2018, Kevin Can Wait. Two of those private investigators were Saul Roth, a former lieutenant in the Nassau County Police Department in New York, and Yanti Green. Messages obtained between Mr. Green and Mr. Roth in unrelated litigations revealed that word is they, quote, Scientology, want to kill her. Wow. Defendants continue to stalk surveil and harass Ms. Remini from 2020 to the present day. In July and August of 2020, Ms. Remini and residents of her neighborhood in Los Angeles, California, noticed a man in a white car parked outside of Ms. Remini's home. After reasonable investigation, it was discovered that this man has a history of mental illness and a violent criminal record. Upon information and belief provided by former top Scientology operatives, Defendants armed this man with a vehicle and money to stalk and surveil Ms. Remini. Over the course of several weeks, the defendants, at the defendant's behest, this man rammed his car into the security gates of Ms. Remini's community. He told residents he was waiting to get into Ms. Remini's house, claiming he had been there several times before and that he needed to get a bigger ladder in order to reach her bedroom window. He was eventually arrested and then released at which point he called the police to allege that Ms. Remini was holding hostages at her home. After police responded to Ms. Remini's house, he was again arrested. Former Scientology operated, uh, operatives have acknowledged that Scientology has a practice of seeking out individuals with mental illness who are homeless or addicted to drugs and other vulnerable people in order to harass its enemies. To incentivize successful outcomes, OSA operatives are rewarded with bonus points for valuable final products, including, quote, intelligence furnished that effectively guides the progress of Scientology, end quote. Another, quote, public matters and individuals which impede human liberty investigated and exposed, end quote. And another, quote, enemies of Scientology depopular depopularized to the point of total obliteration. 
There also are points for pickets, uh, negative media, litigation filed, evictions, government actions, among others. Upon information and belief, defendants also hired Talon Executive Services Incorporated, or Talon, a company based in Cosa Mesa, uh, California, to stalk, harass, and surveil Ms. Remini. In 2022, employees of Talon showed up at Ms. Remini's neighbor's home under the guise that Ms. Remini arranged for Talon to install, quote, free security and surveillance technology there. In reality, and based upon information and belief, Scientology had hired Talon to plant equipment that would allow Scientology to spy on Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini only became of the, aware of this ruse after her neighbor called her to thank her. Well, thank goodness. As recently as 2023, an unidentified male was recorded on video surveillance arriving at Ms. Re as, at Ms. Remini's gated community in a vehicle armed with a hammer. This unidentified man drove to Ms. Remini's residence and smashed her mailbox, which she has to keep locked, uh, to illegally seize Ms. Remini's personal mail. Police responding to Ms. Remini's call surmised that he had been sent by Scientology and, upon information and belief, he was sent by defendants. In addition to the physical stalking and harassment of Ms. Remini, defendants' never-ending harassment extends to Ms. Remini's friends, family, and colleagues through a process known as, quote, noisy investigation. Noisy investigation is a formal Scientology policy written by L. Ron Hubbard involving pretending to conduct a criminal investigation in order to sow chaos and discredit and create fear for its targets, as well as their family members, uh, friends, and colleagues. Uh, this is pulled from, uh, looks like an executive letter below. OSA operatives pretending to be freelance journalists have implemented noisy investigations against Ms. Remini to harass her. Scientology has harassed Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini's sister, uh, they have harassed her sister at her workplace in Los Angeles. Uh, they have harassed her stepmother at her residence in North Carolina. They harassed her father, George Remini, uh, various of Ms. Remini's former employees and their family members, her stepsons in San Jose, and a friend of one stepson who tweeted that he was a big fan of Aftermath, her sister, and her niece and nephew in Minnesota. In each case, defendants' agents claim to be reporters who are doing a story about Ms. Remini and indicate that they have information that Ms. Remini was abusive to her family and friends and then attempt to get Ms. Remini's friends and families to comment on the fake accusations to provide disparaging information. Defendants OSA pseudo-journalists pseudo have written false statements and articles on defendants' website, Freedom Magazine, at freedommag.org. Freedommag.org includes various articles and videos aimed to defame and spread fraudulent information about Ms. Remini. Some of these videos are entitled, quote, Leah Remini, a one-woman hate machine, quote, Leah Remini told Dying Star, uh, I'm sorry, Dying Sister, get get charity care, family says. Um, and then there's a, another, oh, and video comparing Ms. Remini and the A&E network to Ku Klux Klan members who incite hate crimes. This decade-long coordinated harassment of Ms. Remini, as well as her friends, family, and business acquaintances has caused severe emotional distress to Ms. Remini and has made her fear for her physical safety and that of her family and has caused the loss of business opportunities as laid out below. Social media attacks against Ms. Remini. In addition to physical stalking and harassment from 2013 to the present day, defendants have implemented a mass coordinated social media effort against Ms. Remini to spread false and malicious information 
about her through hundreds of Scientology-run websites and social media accounts. Hundreds of websites and social media accounts were created by defendants and or those working at the direction of defendants to harass, embarrass, shame, and defame Ms. Remini. Each website was more explicit and offensive than the last, containing attacks on Ms. Remini's character, her work, her family, her daughter, and every facet of her life. These hundreds of websites are part of a larger group of websites against enemies of Scientology, which include over 5,000 separate domains and include the same coordinated messaging dictated by OSA. For instance, in 2015, the defendants created a website and front group entitled Scientologists Taking Action Against Discrimination um, Stand at the Stand League website. The Stand League website is one of many websites that defendants have used for years to attack, lie about, and harass people who are deemed enemies of Scientology. This website has posted 76 blog posts and 14 articles harassing and churning lies against Ms. Remini, claiming over and over that she is unhinged, she is an unhinged religious bigot who profits by spreading hate, unquote. Some of these articles are entitled. Number one, are Leah Remini and A&E responsible for the wave of violence against the Jehovah Witnesses Kingdoms Hall, Kingdom Halls? Uh, Leah Remini is a disgrace to women of valor everywhere. As the world remembers the Holocaust, bigot Leah Remini inspires praise of Hitler. Footnote for that one says, uh, the accusation is particularly egregious as Ms. Remini's mother is Jewish. That's... Defendants also created another website an entire website designed to in attack, intimidate, and harass Ms. Remini. The main page of the website is a narrative created at the direction of defendants with various tabs leveling outrageous uh, accusations against Ms. Remini, including but not limited to, number one, falling, filing a false police report and then attempting to extort Scientology, and two, abusing family members, including her half-sister and father, both of whom have passed away since. Uh, this site also includes articles entitled Leah Remini to her dying sister, Get Charity Care, with headline reading, Leah, uh, with headline reading, Remini's former stepmother lets loose on how Leah made a complete mockery and disaster of siblings' death. Uh, um, with vengeance leads to words. When vengeance leads to words, uh, words, Leah, uh, words lead to hate and violence with headline reading, quote, Leah Remini has incited the very bigotry and hate that she herself was fearful of and abhorred as a Scientologist, hmm. end quote. This website includes a separate tag, uh, tab with 55 videos recorded at the direction of defendants eliciting negative commentary from individuals, some of whom Ms. Remini did not even know or have any real reaction with. The online attacks do not end there. Defendants created another website with excerpts entitled, among others, quote, how Leah Remini viciously breaks up a family, end quote, Another one, quote, how Leah Remini callously treats her own family, end quote, and, quote, Leah's anti-religious sugar daddy's history of drug dealing and cons, end quote. The website includes 131 videos recorded at the directive of defendants eliciting false and defamatory commentary from individuals ranging or from individuals regarding Ms. Remini and 61 blog posts leveling false and defamatory claims, including, quote, another criminal Remini source 
returns to jail. Unquote. Uh, another one, quote, a &E and Leah Remini spread hate, end quote. Another headline titled uh, Remini, Aftermath Propaganda Inciting Religious Hate. That's, um, these are defamatory websites and videos. Leah's anti-religious sugar daddy's history of drug and daily bugs. Leah's new liar uh, for hire is a proud Confederate flag lover. Um, Leah Remini's paid liar. Uh, Leah Remini's aftermath exposed as lies once again. Another one, Leah Remini's family exposed Leah's lies. Yet another one, Leah Remini's fraud. Another one entitled Total Fraud. Another one entitled Leah Remini's Real Aftermath, Hate Speech, uh, Threats, and Violence. And yet another one, um, Leah Remini, the Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde of Hollywood, among others, among many others. This website also includes a link to a series of letters written by current members of Scientology in a concerted effort to prevent the production of Aftermath. In addition to websites created by defendants and its employees, there are hundreds of Scientology-run Twitter accounts that are actively tweeting daily misinformation about Ms. Remini in the furtherance of the suppressive person and OSA operations and attacks that defendants are deploying against her. Based upon information and belief, these individuals create Twitter accounts for the purpose of harassing Ms. Remini and other whistleblowers and advocates who have been deemed suppressive persons or attackers of Scientology uh, by followers on social media. Uh, they follow each other's accounts and coordinate their attacks on Ms. Remini. For instance, since 2017, uh, that handle was created and run by defendants, has posted thousands of malicious and harassing tweets about Ms. Remini. In March 2023 alone, they have posted over 247 tweets aimed at Ms. Remini, includes dozens of photoshopped images of Ms. Remini in, quote, I love rapists apparel, with similar fraudulent uh, messages purporting to show Ms. Remini's support for rapists, support of rapists under the hashtag uh, there. <clears throat> Just a few of these photos is included herein, but hundreds of similar images appear under the defendant's Twitter accounts. Okay. These are looks like um, tweets that are put out by uh, these hate groups that they are talking about here, that the stand um, looks like hate monitor. And then the other one is um, something else. Scientology operated Twitter accounts make unsub unsubstantiated claims that Ms. Remini is abusive to her daughter, who is now 18 years old. For instance, on March 22nd, 2023, Stand Monitor tweeted that uh, Leah Remini trains her daughter to beat little girls. And um, another so another handle claims that Ms. Remini's daughter left, quote, her toxic home life because Ms. Remini, quote, called her daughter a C word all the time, end quote. Scientologist Phil Masson tweeted, Leah Rimjob is a hateful C word and it shows even on her stupid, boring game show citing um, that website, a website run by Scientology. Defendants or individuals directed by defendants have tweeted untrue and highly damaging claims that Ms. Remini has involuntarily committed her college daughter to a psychiatric uh, facility. These tweets also included questions like, where is her daughter? Leaving Ms. Remini to fear that Scientology operatives and 
agents were trying to track down her daughter's location. These claims have caused Ms. Remini to fear for the safety of her daughter. Defendants or individuals directed by defendants also have control over hundreds of Twitter handles, which are regularly used to attack Ms. Remini. Um, there's a nice list of all of these Twitter handles right there in a footnote for you. Indeed, while there are virtually hundreds of Twitter accounts controlled and run by defendants, which actively tweet false and defamatory information against Ms. Remini on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, 31 accounts have tweeted, uh, 1,398 tweets about and against Ms. Remini in March 2023 alone. A few examples of the many defamatory tweets from other Twitter handles are below. Ooh. Okay, so we have another. You can zoom this in if you're in, interested in looking at that, or you can just look on Twitter itself. Um, I'm not sure if they're still on there, but as a result of defendants' ongoing course of physical and social media harassment against Ms. Remini, Ms. Remini has incurred substantial economic expenses to protect her and her family's physical and emotional health and safety. I Heart Media Contract. In addition to the contract detailed above, defendants' incessant harassment of anyone or any entity affiliated with Ms. Remini has caused Ms. Remini to lose current and prospective business contracts and opportunities. On April 13th, 2018, Ms. Remini entered into a binding contract and profit sharing arrangement with iHeartMedia Plus Entertainment Incorporated for the purpose of producing a podcast on iHeartRadio. The contract was signed by both Ms. Remini and the SVP business. Uh, I'm guessing that's the senior vice president of business and operations, business operations and partnerships of iHeartMedia and Plus entertainment inc uh on march 1st 2020 iheart media plus entertainment inc and ms remini executed an amendment to the april 13th 2018 contract wherein ms remini was uh to produce two podcasts number one a weekly chat podcast and number two a weekly uh podcast about scientology the contract gave iHeartMedia the option to renew each of the two podcasts for an additional two seasons. The May 1st, 2020 contract was signed by Ms. Remini and Mike Rinder, a former Scientologist, and um, the president of iHeart Podcasts. Mm -hmm. Ms. Remini and Mr. Rinder co-hosted their Scientology-related po podcast called Scientology Fair Game. This podcast included their accounts of Scientology, including its policy and practice of inflicting abusive tactics in the name of fair game on those who are deemed to be enemies of Scientology. On March 4th, 2022, as part of its fair game campaign in order to derail her podcast, Defendants directed and controlled the publication of an article at that, um, it looks like the Freedom Mag website, claiming that iHeartRadio, quote, allows Remini in obscenity-laced and abusive language to insult, defame, and demean Scientologists, end quote. The article details the measures taken at the direction of defendants to interfere with and terminate Ms. Remini's contract with iHeartMedia. For instance, defendants openly admit that they called and emailed iHeartMedia's executive vice president and chief communications officer, producer, and the podcast audio editor in an attempt to prevent Ms. Remini's podcast from airing. Indeed, defendants even took credit for advertisers pulling their advertising from Ms. Remini's podcast on iHeartRadio. Throughout the duration of the contract, defendants engaged in continuous efforts to end Ms. Remini's contract with iHeartMedia. 
defendants directed individuals to follow and harass podcast producers until those producers grew so fearful that iHeartMedia made the decision to terminate the relationship with Ms. Remini to protect its employees and agents, even though the show was successful in its ratings. Ultimately, iHeartMedia ended its contract with Ms. Remini after its last episode aired on March 7th, 2022. There's another contract um, for Audio Boom, Audio Boom contract. On August 1st, 2022, Ms. Remini entered into a contract with Audio Boom Limited to be the exclusive audio advertising sales representative for the Scientology Fair Game podcast for one year. The contract was signed by both Ms. Remini and the CEO of Audio Boom Limited. On August 3rd, 2022, at the direction of defendants, the organization Stand sent a letter to the CEO of Audio Boom, informing him that, quote, Audio Boom will soon be syndicating the hate podcast of two rabid anti-Scientologists, end quote. Okay, so this is a letter that this Stand organization sent directly to the CEO of Audio Boom. Um, this letter goes on to explain that, quote, when the podcast was last running, we reached out to companies to inform them this was, to inform them this was the def defamation and bigotry they were paying for through their advertising. We heard back from chief communications and marketing officers from Verizon to eBay, confirming their ads were no longer running on this hate podcast. This is still the letter. The podcast shortly thereafter lost all commercial advertising. Audio boom advertisers deserve the decency of being informed. You intend to identify their brands with defamation and hate. We will uh, be so informing them end quote. So again, that's that letter that was sent to the CEO of Audio Boom. Uh, the letter is signed by 39 Scientologists and was also sent to the CFO, the COO, uh, Director of Operations and Communications, uh, the VP of U.S. Content and Partnerships, and the Content Manager for Audio Boom. <clears throat> okay, so a CFO is usually the chief financial officer. Um, COO is usually the chief operations officer, the chief operating officer, uh, director of operations and communications. When you see VP, it's usually vice president, um, vice president of U.S. content and content manager. Let's go to the next page. On August 10th, 2022, at the direction of defendants, Stand sent a letter to the U.S. CEO of one of Audio Boom's advertisers, Babel, addressing the podcast and stating, we trust that like Verizon, eBay, State Farm, and countless other companies, this kind of dehumanizing, hateful content violates your ad buying gu uh, guidelines and could not be further from your brand values. Audio Boom syndicates hate. Please pull your advertising from this platform, end quote. So that was in the letter uh, to the U.S. CEO of one of, uh, to the CEO of Babel. I think it's fair to point out there are two different things that are named fair game. One is the podcast um, that Leah Remini and Mark Render were working on. It was called Fair Game. Um, there's also a policy in uh, Scientology. It's it's also called Fair Game. So sometimes Fair Game sounds funny in some of these uh, in in some of these. Um, background pieces or these these are actually the letters sent um, by the stand league 
So on August, uh, continuing with 144 here, on August 18th, 2022, the chief content officer of Audio Boom sent the following to agents of Ms. Remini, meaning that um, the company uh, sent this to Ms. Remini's representatives. Um, they say that the Stan League has been contacting Audio Boom's advertisers saying that we're promoting, Audio Boom is promoting hate as a company by working with Fair Game, the podcast. They've sent six emails to the CEO of Pretty Litter alone, a client not even associated with Fair Game, the podcast. So what they're saying is, this is impacting other clients that are not even associated or advertising on your um, on your podcasts. Are you aware of this and has Fair Game been impacted by this before? Asking, has the podcast been impacted by Fair Game? So the podcast, Fair Game, has it been impacted? by the fair game policies of Scientology. From the trailer that was just released, it alludes that this may have been the case at iHeart, uh, referring back to the iHeart uh, uh, earlier information. On August 22nd, 2022, at the direction of defendants, Stand sent a letter to the CEO of Candy Capital, a significant investor in Audio Boom informing him that when his hate podcast was streaming on its previous platform, Verizon, State Farm, eBay, and others pulled their ads upon learning they were sponsoring hate. All commercial advertising then ceased on the podcast. There have been no new episodes since March 2022. And asking that, quote, as the company's largest investor, we are requesting you do something about the syndication of hate. Okay. On August 30th, 2022, Ms. Remini's agents received a communication from an audio boom executive, which marked the formal termination of Ms. Remini's contract with audio boom. This communication specifically noted that the termination of Ms. Remini's audio boom contract was due to, quote, stands harassment and intimidation of audio booms employees end quote as well as the false and defamatory accusations made by stand to audio boom and its advertisers and the negative business implement implement implications that would reasonably ensue next is the game show network people puzzler on January of 2021, Ms. Remini be began hosting the show People Puzzler on the Game Show Network, a show which featured contestants answering cro uh, crossword style clues about pop culture and celebrities. Defendants in their usual course of action of attacking and harassing Ms. Remini began posting open letters to the Game Show Network about how it should stop airing a show which allows an unhinged bigot to host as well as claiming that the game show network is employing a quote rape apologist as their host end quote and that quote remini obviously agrees it's not a big deal to sexually abuse women end quote <clears throat> one open letter claimed that ms remini had fomented um, violent and deadly attacks and asked what's next a game show hosted by a kkk leader neo-nazi jeopardy defendants also assailed the advertisers of the game show network urging these advertisers including but not limited to kellogg's and procter and gamble to pull their support from the network by falsely asserting that Ms. Remini had inspired, quote, hundreds of threats and acts of violence 
including declarations of intent to murder Church of Scientology members, end quote. Defendants also used Twitter to post images of Ms. Remini juxtaposed against the log logos of well-known brands as part of an effort to leave the impression that major brands are pulling out as advertisers of People Puzzler due to Ms. Remini, including advertisers that have not withdrawn their support. For example, Stand posted uh, the following, and this is going to be some... Uh, hate monitor posted stuff. Um, I think that's stand in the logo. Um, also, there's another tweet there. Oh, I see. Did it look like, yeah, she was banned or something. This activity is consistent with other instances in which Scientology has created the false impression that other advertisers have pulled their business from projects related to Ms. Remini. Defendants also sent OSA operatives claiming to be journalists to the set of People Puzzler, asking producers about claims that Ms. Remini is allegedly abusive in the workplace. Okay, next we have Vice News Documentary. In December of 2022, Ms. Remini was contacted by a documentary filmmaker and correspondent and producers for Vice News to make a documentary about the disappearance of defendant Miscavige's wife, Shelley Miscavige. After two months of creative discussions between Ms. Remini and Vice, Ms. Remini's agents were abruptly informed on March 2nd, 2022, that the project would not be moving forward. Based on information and belief, Vice ceased its discussions with Ms. Remini due to the dependence or the defendant's fair game campaign, uh, ID slash PR. On February 24th, 2023, Scientology started a new campaign against Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini had been a client of entertainment publicity firm ID slash PR for nearly a decade. During her time as a client, Ms. Remini would take a hiatus, um, a hiatus occasionally, when she didn't plan to do any press appearances and would therefore not pay a retainer during this time. ID slash PR represents hundreds of entertainment industry figures from actors to directors to writers. It also represents production companies and other media businesses. Other clients of ID slash PR have from time to time made jokes or statements related to Shelley Miscavige or D Tom Cruise. Scientology's immediate response to those individuals was vicious attacks on social media, uh, was vicious attacks on social media, publicly calling these individuals, among other things, bigots. This is a standard operating procedure for Scientology to evoke Scientology sympathy for being attacked by alleged religious bigots. There is a citation here which looks like a basic policy letter you can look that up if you would like on february 24th 2023 scientology's osa operations began an attack on ms remini's publicity firm through official scientology accounts and scientology controlled accounts Operatives began disseminating a set of conspiracy theories that were utterly false and defamatory and involved the founder of ID slash PR being the leader of an anti-Scientology cabal. Scientology also posted pictures of uh, the, the founder of ID slash PR with Hi Harvey Weinstein suggest suggesting that she supported sexual abuse. Other conspiracy theories included the false allegation that Ms. Remini was the head of ID slash PR and covertly directed an anti-Scientology campaign from her position. Scientology then started tagging the Twitter accounts of other celebrities known to be clients of ID slash PR to ask them if they were aware of this non-existent 
anti-Scientology conspiracy being run by ID slash PR. All of these tweets, which eventually grew to over 100, were intended to get uh, the founder of ID slash PR to buckle under the pressure and drop Ms. Remini as a client, which would further isolate Ms. Remini in the inter entertainment industry. The founder of ID slash PR later directed a direct message to Scientology account, Stan monitor and told them that Ms. Remini was no longer a client. At the time, Ms. Remini was also on hiatus with ID slash PR as she did not have any press commitments. She, however, remained a client of the firm as she had been for many years. Scientology tweeted that the founder of ID slash PR had dropped her as a client Official Scientology and Scientology controlled accounts cheered on this news and praised the founder of ID slash PR for dumping Ms. Remini. Scientology further pushed the idea that influential entertainment industry figures abandoned Ms. Remini due to her, quote, toxicity and, quote, bigotry. A few days after her initial direct message to Stand Monitor, uh, the founder of ID slash PR messaged the account again to tell them that not only was Ms. Remini a client of ID slash PR, but that they were also misrepresenting her words. Scientology then turned on the founder of ID slash PR again and started attacking her and Ms. Remini, falsely suggesting that Ms. Remini had threatened the founder of ID slash PR into reacting her previous direct message into, I'm sorry, her, retracting her previous direct message. Since this defamatory campaign began, official Scientology accounts have tweeted those defamatory allegations well over 100 times. Since the day Ms. Remini left Scientology, defendants have stalked Ms. Remini, harassed Ms. Remini, disseminated hateful, false, and defamatory information about Ms. Remini, and done everything in her power to interfere with any and every business relationship in an effort to prevent her disclosing what goes on inside Scientology. While defendants have not succeeded in muzzling obliterating, nor, quote, ruining utterly, they have threatened and harmed what Ms. Remini holds most valuable, her family, her security, her reputation, and her career. Scientology has orchestrated and continues to impose a daily drumbeat of lies, misinformation, harassment, uh, surveillance, threats, and invasions of Ms. Remini's privacy. Scientology has made the expected abuses and harassment a weight Leah Remini always carries, knowing that she will be followed, her trash will be searched, her image distorted, and her college-age daughter baited. It has made virtually every contract Ms. Remini is offered problematic and deterred her from seeking opportunities for fear of what would be unleashed on her business partners, all exactly as defendants intended. Defendants have committed a litany of legal violations that must be restrained and remedied. Defendants' constant life-altering tortious behavior cannot continue. Past filing continuing course of conduct by defendants. In the short period of time since Ms. Remini's complaint was filed, Ms. Remini and others have been subject to continued aggressive harassment. An official statement issued by Scientology after the lawsuit asserted that Ms. Remini's statements had, quote, generated threats of actual generated threats of and actual violence against the church and its members as evidenced by multiple criminal convictions of individuals poisoned by Remini's propaganda, end quote. 
um, and suggested she consider emigrating to Russia. In the same vein, this tweet was also posted on a Scientology account on August 2nd, the day after the complaint was filed. Um, and the, you can see a tweet here if you'd like to read more of it. I'm not going to read it out loud. It's from uh, something called the Expose Network or the Exposed Network. There's more from the Exposed Network. Feel free to read or not read as you wish. Since the lawsuit was filed, there has been evidence of potential fraud flagged on several of Ms. Remini's credit cards. The instance of fraud since the complaint was filed is significantly, significantly higher than what Ms. Remini's business manager has observed in the past. Last week, the business of Ms. Remini's tutor was hacked, resulting in a $15,000 loss to his business account. Prior to the filing of the lawsuit, this individual received Scientology promotions at his home, consistent with prior instances in which Scientology has signaled its awareness that individuals are associated with Ms. Remini. On August 15th, 2023, Mike Rinder, who co-hosted the Aftermath and Scientology Fair Game, and his wife were surveilled by an unknown vehicle. Their son and then neighbors alerted the renders to, quote, a suspicious vehicle parked on the main boulevard of our community outside their house, unquote. The same car preceded them on a drive to run errands and followed them into a parking lot. They became they came upon the same car again in a church parking lot adjacent to the entrance uh, to their community. When the renders drove up to the car, the car pulled out, making a U-turn over a median to avoid them. Mike Rinder notes in a video posted on the blog that he had to engage in similar efforts against another individual when he headed OSA and is certain that Scientology is surveilling him to ensure that he does not assist process servers in locating Mr. Miscavige or attempt to serve him personally. This harassment is especially egregious as Mr. Rinder is currently undergoing treatment for cancer, knowing that her friend, while ill, is subject to this surveillance causes Ms. Remini great distress. Scientology's pattern and practice of abusing those deemed suppressive persons. Scientology's campaign against Leah Remini is rooted in Scientology policies and is consistent with and a continuation of similar efforts. A few examples, though not an exhaustive list, are described below. In 1971, journalist and Holocaust survivor Paulette Cooper published an investigative book about Scientology's abusive practices and criminally and criminality entitled The Scandal of Scientology. According to files later seized by the FBI, Hubbard, implementing the policies he wrote, designed plans and activities against her to silence and destroy Paulette Cooper as a suppressive person. Upon Hubbard's command, the Guardian's office initiated an operation named, quote, Operation Dynamite, which was intended to frame Cooper. Agents for the Guardian's office obtained Cooper's fingerprints, her letterhead, and gained access to her typewriter without her authorization, and manipulated a bomb threat sent to Scientology. As a result, Cooper was indicted by federal authorities. Cooper was later fully vindicated when an FBI raid of Scientology in 1977 uncovered internal Scientology directives about the plan to frame her. In 1976, because Cooper had not yet been silenced, Hubbard commanded the Guardian's office to initiate an operation called Operation Freakout. The operation included plans to attribute to Cooper threats against President Ford, Secretary of State Kissinger, and um, Arab consulates. The stated goal was to get Cooper, quote, incarcerated in a mental institution or jail, or at least 
to hit her so hard that she drops her attacks, unquote. And quote and quote to remove pc from her position of power uh paulette cooper from her position of power so that she cannot attack the c of s or church of scientology end quote over nearly a decade scientology continued its mission to follow the policy to destroy cooper's reputation her mental health and her life including but not limited to destroying her father's finances and business illegally wiretapping her phones, having agents of Scientology befriend her and move in with her to spy on her. Wow. Send smear letters filled with lies to her friends and family, paper her neighborhood with flyers filled with lies about her sexual activities, have her book officially imported into countries that had much stricter libel laws to Scientology. So Scientology could sue her and uh, break into her psychiatrist's office to steal her medical records. Upon 1973, upon Hubbard's command and his wife, Mary Sue Hubbard's leadership, the Guardian's office initiated an operation called Operation Snow White. At that time, at the time, Scientology faced significant scrutiny from governments worldwide, especially in the United States. These government agencies were put on Scientology's target list, and they too received Guardian's office handlings. By the time it ended in 1977 with a massive FBI raid, Operation Snow White had become the most extensive infiltration into the United States government and its agencies in history. Dang. Thousands of Scientologists obtained jobs to infiltrate the federal government to steal records, destroy records, alter records with false information, and gather intelligence on the federal government's investigations into Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard. The Department of Justice Sentencing Memorandum, uh, which is footnoted down in the case uh, cited below for Scientology members indicted in the conspiracy reads. Okay, so I'm reading from this sentencing memorandum uh, written back in 1982, it looks like. The brazen and persistent burglaries, thefts, and buggings directed against the United States government were but one minor aspect of the defendant's wanton assault upon the laws of this country. The well-orchestrated campaign to thwart the federal grand jury investigation by destroying evidence, giving false fingerprints in response to a grand jury subpoena, harboring a fugitive, kidnapping a witness, preparing an elaborate cover-up cover up story and assisting in the giving of false statements to the grand jury shows the contempt with which, um, which these defendants had for the judicial system of this country. The standard of human conduct embodied in such practices represent no less than the absolute perversion of any known ethical value system. In view of this, it defies the imagination that these defendants have the unmitigated audacity to seek to defend their actions in the name of, quote, religion. Wow. Scientology had also successfully infiltrated governments in 30 countries worldwide and Interpol, an international organization that facilitates law enforcement cooperation globally. Also another uh, another citation for that. In 1975, Scientology landed in Clearwater, Florida, in intending to turn it, per Hubbard, into a, quote, Scientology city. But Scientology entered Clearwater under a pseudonymous entity, under a pseudonymous entity, and began buying up well-known properties in downtown Clearwater. For a period, Scientology operated under the name of a shell company called, quote, United Churches of Florida, end quote. 
The plan to infiltrate Clearwater and take it over was known internally in Scientology as, quote, Project Normandy. Once city officials became aware that Scientology, not the United Churches of Florida, was buying up properties in Clearwater, officials like Mayor Gabe Casares, Casares became alarmed and started to speak out. Casares and Scientology's attempt to take over Clearwater in such an underhanded, underhanded way was a paramilitary operation by a terrorist group. For expressing his concerns, Cazares was declared fair game and subject to one of the more horrific sets of operations in Scientology history. The goal of these operations remained consistent with Scientology's fair game laws to silence and muzzle and obliterate the attacker. What is known about attempts to destroy Cazares was discovered after the FBI raided Scientology buildings in 1977. At least five significant operations were conducted against Cazares by Scientology. The names of these operations included Operation Cazares Handling, Operation Keeler, Operation Speedy Gonzalez, Operation Taco Less, and Operation Italian Frog. While he was in Washington, D.C., Cazares was running for Congress at the time. A Scientology operative worked her way into Cazares' life and convinced him to give her a ride. Another Scientology operative pretended to be hit by Cazares' car. Cazares' Scientology companion in the car persuaded him not to return to the scene. The goal of Operation Keeler was to give the media and Democratic Party officials to whom Scientology operated operatives wrote the impression that Cazares was not only involved in a hit and run, but that the passenger in his car when the accident happened was a woman with whom he was having an extramarital affair. Scientology had operatives and agents call Cazares' home pretending to be women who had a sexual interest in Cazares to destroy his marriage. In addition, Scientology operatives planted a fake marriage certificate in Mexican government files to try and frame him for bigamy. At one point, Cazares hired Merrill Vanier, uh, Merrill Vanier to serve as his attorney, and he took on Scientology. However, Cazares later learned that Vanier was, in fact, an agent for Scientology's guardian's office. The Cult Awareness Network, or CAN, CAN, was founded in 1978 in the aftermath of the cult mass murder in Jonestown, Guyana. The total destruction of CAN, or CAN, is one of many examples of an organization, rather than a specific individual, that was targeted for speaking out against Scientology. CAN, or CAN became a critical hub of information and support in the pre-internet days for people who were concerned that their family members, friends, and loved ones were being brainwashed by Scientology. People who wanted to learn more about Scientology, uh, people who wanted to learn more about what Scientology was could call one of CAN's 23 chapters and speak to a volunteer who would educate them on the realities of Scientology or 200 other cults. CAN officials also spoke out publicly about Scientology's abuses. Uh, for example, in 1991, uh, Cynthia Kisser of CAN was quoted in Time Magazine's cover story about Scientology. Kisser said, Scientology is quite likely the most ruthless, the most, the most classically terroristic, the most litigious, and the most lucrative cult the country has ever seen. No cult extracts more money from its members. Scientology routinely attacked CAN and referred to it as a, quote, religious hate group. As part of its operation against CAN, Scientology commanded 50 civilian Scientologists to try to become members of CAN. When these Scientologists were rejected for membership, they filed discrimination lawsuits against CAN. The attorney filing these lawsuits on their behalf was Scientologist 
Kendrick Moxon, whose law firm primarily handles matters related to Scientology. Moxon also represented on a pro bono basis non-Scientologists who wanted to sue CAN for non-Scientology related matters. These operations achieved their objectives where CAN was forced into bankruptcy as a result of litigation directed and paid for by Scientology. These operations achieved their objectives when CAN was forced into bankruptcy as a result of litigation directed and paid for by Scientology. As part of the reorganization of CAN in bankruptcy, its assets were auctioned off. This included use of the CAN name, control over its website, and even its phone numbers. These assets were won at auction by a Scientologist who promptly turned them over to Scientology. In the nascent days of the internet, people were still not aware that Scientology had gained control of CAN's assets. As a result, people would call CAN seeking help on getting their loved ones out of Scientology, but would have no idea that they were receiving advice from a Scientologist. In 1991, Time Magazine published an investigation by reporter Richard bah Bahar, Bahar into Scientology entitled, quote, The Thriving Cult of Greed and Power. The cover story devastated Scientology's public rep reputation and led David Miscavige to go to war against Time magazine and the author personally. For years, Bahar was trailed and harassed by Scientology's private investigators. In addition, Scientology illegally obtained copies of his phone records and credit reports. Scientology also spent millions of dollars trying to tarnish Bahar's reputation and that of Time Magazine. In 1997, investor Bob Minton began, uh, became a fair game target of Scientology after he began funding efforts to expose Scientology's abuses and financially supporting former Scientologists who were whistleblowers. Minton, who was never a Scientologist, became a key uh, focus of David Miscavige. Under Miscavige's command, Scientology got Minton's, Minton's bank accounts in Switzerland frozen based on false money laundering charges from the Nigerian government. After Minton spent $10 million on efforts to expose Scientology, he finally gave up after he was left penniless and fled to Ireland. David Turetsky is a research professor in the computer science department at Carnegie Mellon University. He has also been the object of fair game, though he has never been a member of Scientology, he has been a public critic, particularly of Narconon, a Scientology drug rehabilitation program. Narconon promotes the idea that drugs reside in the body fat where they can be released years later and promotes the use of saunas for detoxification. OSA directed a campaign to, quote, get DST removed from his position at CMU and neutralized as an attacker, end quote. It included efforts to gin up a congressional investigation, cut off Turetsky's federal funding, circulate letters uh, to Carnegie Mellon faculty and flyers to his businesses where Turetsky shopped, Activate Carnegie Mellon, uh, Carnegie Mellon alumni, field websites critical of Toretsky, and spread false stories in the media, including uh, tales that Dr. Toretsky would be responsible for another Columbine. The goals uh, was the goal was also to keep Toretsky distracted under attack on the net by tripling the negative postings that were being done previously. Tori Christman, a former Scientologist and former Office of Special Affairs agent, became, uh, became the focus of several OSA operations in 2000 after she publicly left Scientology. The sophisticated operation Scientology ran against Christman due to her being declared fair game was revealed in a leaked March 20. Uh, 2006 Office of Special Affairs order, which explained in detail how OSA was 
to destroy Christman. In finding what they seek to protect and destroy it, Osa reviewed Christman's uh, confidential religious and ethics files and determined that Christman sought to protect her health, reputation, uh, relationships with the media, and job. The goal of the OSA operation was stated, Tory dismissed as an attacker or totally restrained and muzzled. Among the nefarious activities listed in the OSA memo have Christman's ex-husband, who remained in Scientology, call and write to news outlets and her employer to smear her as a liar. The OSA memo directed that a Scientology private investigator infiltrate the consulting business at which Christman worked with clients under the, under the ruse of becoming a new client. After signing with Christman, the private investigator was to complain to her boss that she was incompetent. The OSA order also instructed operatives to place negative reviews about Christman on negative boards and the Better Business Bureau website. The comments should include, quote, that Christman is a crazy person taking antidepressants, end quote. In 2013, a private investigator who had just been arrested by law enforcement in West Allis, Wisconsin, revealed that he was being paid $10,000 a week by Scientology to track David Miscavige's father, Ron Miscavige. The senior Miscavige had fled his son's reign at a secretive Scientology base in Southern California and was living in exile in Wisconsin. A private investigator told authorities that while monitoring Ron Miscavige, he thought Miscavige might be having a heart attack. The investigator called David Miscavige to pass on this information. The private investigator told authorities that David Miscavige told him that if he witnessed his father having a heart attack, he was to not interfere and let him die. In 2016, when Ron Miscavige's memoirs were published, Scientology registered hundreds of websites to smear his reputation and even went so far as to have Scientology's top attorney, Monique Yingling, falsely attack Ron Miscavige in a television interview. These operations, among others, demonstrate a pattern and practice of harassment, defamation, and abuse through hundreds of Scientology orders carried out since its inception and spanning over seven dec decades through today, affecting Ms. Remini and others, uh, and likely to endanger others in the future. Wow. So we've made it to the causes of action. Um, we are at page 53. Again, this is a 68-page document. Be sure to check the chapters to jump to pieces. We've wrapped up the background for this case, and there was a lot of background. It was good background. Uh, we are now at the causes of action. So each count or each um, cause of action is going to be kind of recounted here in the plaintiff's words or in the, um, this is the version for, for Leah Remini, right? Because this is a complaint. Um, so we'll we'll start here at causes of action. Count one, civil harassment. Plaintiff incorporates and realleges all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though for, fully set forth herein. From the moment plaintiff Remini departed Scientology, she was declared a suppressive person and has been subjected to a series of acts of harassment by defendants and defendants' operatives. Defendants' course of conduct includes, but is not limited to, following, surveilling, and stalking plaintiff, sending Scientology operatives to break into Ms. Remini's gated community, stealing her personal residential mail, vandalizing her mailbox, planting and or attempting to plant spyware in close proximity to her house, sending harassing correspondence to plaintiffs and to others, including business associates and sponsors regarding plaintiff and creating a social media spear, uh, smear campaign against plaintiff that includes false and malicious accusations made against Ms. Remini and at times her family. As defendant's pattern of conduct was defamatory and, co and 
conducted within and conducted with the intent to harass it was criminal in nature and not protected by the veil of religious practice Plaintiff also experienced scores of incidents of credible threats of violence, placing plaintiff in fear for her own safety and the safety of her immediate family. These threats of violence could not and did not serve any legitimate purpose. Defendant stalking of plaintiff constitutes unlawful violence and violation of section uh, 646.9 of the California Penal Code. Defendant's knowing and willful course of conduct directed at plaintiff has occurred for at least 10 years and continues to this day. It has alarmed, annoyed, and harassed her without any legitimate purpose other than to cause her harm. The conduct is at such a level as to cause a reasonable person to suffer substantial emotional distress and ha as has been suffered by Ms. Remini. Some examples of defendant's harassment as described above include A, being physically harassed and surveilled by private investigators, private citizens, and OSA members of Scientology at the behest of defendants. B, defendants directing and coordinating an extensive and decade-long social media campaign against Ms. Remini via hundreds of Scientology-run and directed Twitter accounts, and websites by means of false pretenses, misrepresentations, and lies, and C, using social media and other means to send hundreds of letters to Ms. Remini's business associates and advertisers threatening these individuals and entities to cease their affiliation with Ms. Remini based on lies and misinformation. Defendant's willful acts of harassment entitles plaintiff Remini to an order enjoining defendants and their agents from harassing, intimidating, stalking, threatening, contacting, either directly or indirectly, by mail, social media, correspondence, or otherwise, or coming within a specified distance of or disturbing the peace of plaintiff. Further, an award for compensatory and punitive dam damages to plaintiff from defendants is justified. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for civil harassment and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Count two, stalking, California Code section 1708.7. Plaintiff incorporates and realleges all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Defendants engaged in a pattern of conduct from 2013 and continuing to the present with the intent to follow, alarm, place under surveillance, stalk, and harass the plaintiff. This continuous course of conduct in which defendants engage against plaintiff includes being physically harassed and surveilled by private investigators through their lawyers, private citizens, and OSA members of Scientology at the behest of defendants as described herein. Defendants have also engaged in stalking of plaintiff by posting threatening information to various websites and via social media on a continuing basis. As a result of defendants continuing a uh, pattern of harassing conduct over the last 10 years and through pre the present day, plaintiff reasonably feared for her safety and the safety of her family. As a result of defendants' continuing pattern of harassing conduct over the last 10 years and through present day, plaintiff reasonably suffered severe emotional distress. Defendants, as part of their pattern of conduct alleged herein, made credible threats to the plaintiff with the intent to place the plaintiff in reasonable fear for her safety, despite, despite the plaintiff on multiple occasions clearly demanding that uh, defendants cease and abate their pattern of conduct. As such, an award of compensatory and punitive damages to plaintiff from defendants is justified, wherefore plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for civil stalking and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Count three, intentional infliction of emotional distress. 
plaintiff incorporates and realleges all allegations contained in the for foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Since 2013, defendants have engaged in a continuing course of conduct towards Ms. Remini that constitutes extreme and outrageous conduct. Defendants intended their extreme and outrageous conduct to cause the distress and suffering of plaintiff or knew that such conduct, uh, conduct would cause plaintiff distress and suffering. As a result of the continuing course of extreme and outrageous conduct of defendants, plaintiff has suffered severe emotional distress, mental anguish, and has suffered damages. As such, an award of compensatory and punitive damages to plaintiff from defendants is justified. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for intentional infliction of emotional distress and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Count four, tortious interference with contractual relationship. Plaintiff incorporates and realleges all allegations contained in the forego foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Plaintiff had a binding and valid contract with iHeartMedia. Plaintiff had a binding and valid contract with Audioboom. Defendants knew about the contractual relationship between Ms. Remini and iHeartMedia and Audioboom. Defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's contractual relationship with iHeartMedia without any justification through actions including but not limited to writing false and disparaging accusations about Ms. Remini and her podcast on various social media websites and Twitter accounts owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants and defendants' operatives, sending disparaging letters about Ms. Ms. Remini to iHeartMedia's executive vice president and COO, producer, podcast, audio editor, and advertisers, and harassing iHeartMedia's podcast producers until they decided to end its contractual relationship with Ms. Remini on March 7th, 2022. Defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's contractual relationship with Audioboom without any justification by engaging in conduct that included, but is not limited to, sending disparaging letters about Ms. Remini and her podcast to the CEO of Audioboom, as well as Audioboom's advertisers and investors, encouraging Audioboom to end their relationship with Ms. Remini until Audioboom uh, Audio Boom did end its contractual relationship with Ms. M uh, Remini on August 30th, uh, 2022. Engaging in the aforesaid conduct, defendants intended to disrupt the contractual relationships with Ms. Remini and the and Audio Boom and iHeartMedia, or knew that the disruption of these relationships was substantially certain to occur. As a direct and proximate result of defendants' tortious interference with Ms. Remini's contractual relations, Ms. Remini's contractual relationships with Audio Boom and iHeartMedia were indeed disrupted. As a direct and proximate result of defendants' tortious interference with Ms. Remini's contractual relations, Ms. Remini suffered economic harm, including without limitation, the loss of revenue and fees Ms. Remini would have derived had iHeartMedia and Audio Boom, Boom maintained a contractual relationship with Ms. Remini. Accordingly, Ms. Remini has suffered damage as a result of defendants' tortious interference with Ms. Remini's contractual relationship with iHeartMedia and Audioboom. As such, an award of compensatory and punitive damages to plaintiff from de uh, defendants is justified. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for tortious interference with a contractual, a contractual relationship and award each and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Count five, intentional interference with prospective economic advantage. Plaintiff incorporates and realleges all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. 
Ms. Remini and Audio Boom were in an economic relationship that, had this relationship continued, likely would have resulted in an economic benefit to Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini and iHeartMedia were in an economic relationship that, had this uh, relationship continued, likely would have resulted in an economic benefit to Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini and Game Show Network were in an economic relationship that, if this relationship continues, will likely result in economic benefit to Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini and Vice News were in an economic relationship that probably would have resulted in an economic benefit for Ms. Remini. Ms. Remini's business relationships with Audio Boom, iHeartMedia, Vice News, and the Game Show Network contained the probability of future uh, economic benefits to Remini in the form of revenues. Defendants knew of the economic relationship between Ms. Remini and Audio Boom, iHeartMedia, the Game Show Network, and Vice News, and intentionally took outward measures to destroy these relationships. Defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's economic relationship with Audio Boom by engaging in conduct that included sending disparaging letters about Ms. Remini and her podcast to the CEO of Audio Boom, as well as Audio Boom's advertisers and investors, encouraging Audio Boom to end their relationship with Ms. Remini. Defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's economic relationship with iHeartMedia by engaging in conduct that is in, that included writing false and disparaging accusations about Ms. Remini and her podcast on various social media websites and Twitter accounts owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants and defendants' operatives, sending disparaging letters about Ms. Remini to iHeartMedia's executive vice president and COO, producer, podcast audio, editor, and advertisers, and harassing iHeartMedia's podcast producers until they decided to end their business relationship with Ms. Remini. Defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's economic relationship with the Game Show Network by engaging in conduct, in conduct that included sending disparaging and false open letters to the Game Show Network claiming that Ms. Remini is an, quote, unhinged bigot, a, quote, rape apologist, and someone who believes, quote, it's not a big deal to sexually abuse women, end quote. Sending disparaging letters to the Game Show Network's advertisers, encouraging to pull their support from the Game Show Network for airing Ms. Remini's show, and sending defendants operatives to the Game Show Network with false claims that they were investigating allegations of Ms. Remini's alleged abusive behavior in the workplace. Upon information and belief, defendants intentionally interfered with Ms. Remini's economic relationship with Vice News by harassing employees and directors at Vice News and encouraging them not to work with Ms. Remini. By engaging in the aforesaid conduct and based on the policies and practices under the fair game banner, defendants intended to disrupt the economic relationships with Ms. Remini and Audio Boom, iHeartMedia, the Game Show Network, and Vice News, and ID slash PR, or knew that the disruption of these relationships was substantially certain to occur. As a direct and proximate result, of the defendant's malicious and intentional actions, Ms. Remini's economic relationships with Audio Boom, uh, iHeartMedia, the Game Show Network, and Vice News were indeed disrupted. As a direct and proximate result of defendant's malicious and intentional actions, Ms. Remini suffered economic harm, including without limitation the loss of revenues and fees Ms. Remini would have derived from those economic, those economic relationships. In addition to Audio Boom, iHeartMedia, Vice News, and the Game Show Network, defendants have intentionally interfered with and thwarted an untold number of additional business opportunities by virtue of their attack campaign against Ms. Remini, 
which includes the incessant harassment of any and all individuals and business entities who align themselves with or seek to do business with Ms. Remini. Accordingly, Ms. Remini has suffered damage as a result of defendants' intentional interference with Ms. Remini's uh, prospective economic relations. As such, an award of compensatory and punitive damages to plaintiff from defendants is justified. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini uh, requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for intentional interference with prospective economic advantage and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Defamation and defamation per se, plaintiffs incorporate and reallege all allegations uh, contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Since uh, 2013 and continuing to this day, defendants knowingly and willingly published or caused to be published false and defamatory statements about Ms. Remini. These false and defamatory statements include, but are not limited to, uh, statements accusing Ms. Remini of inciting hate crimes. Uh, a January 31st, 2023 article on Stand League, a website owned and operated and or controlled by defendants, which claims that Ms. Remini's, quote, hate speech has resulted in violent and deadly attacks on innocents, unquote. On August 4th, 2022, article on Stand League, which apparently, which fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulently claims that in 2019, a man incited by Leah Remini's hate speech uh, murdered a 24-year-old Scientologist, Aaron Ye, outside the Australi Australasian headquarters of the church, unquote. On April 13th, 2023, tweet from Hate Monitor, a Twitter owned a Twitter account owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants that falsely claims that Leah Remini is responsible for hundreds of threats and multiple acts of violent hate crime against Scientologists. A tweet dated April 18th, 2023 from Hate Monitor, a Twitter account owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants that falsely stated, quote, on January 3rd, 2019, a man incited by Leah Remini's hate speech murdered a 24-year-old Scientologist, uh, referring to Leah having blood on her hands. The tweet then refers readers to Scientology-run uh, standlead.org website, an undated article on uh, Leah Remini, the website owned and operated and or controlled by defendants, which falsely alleges. Remini's series generated unprecedented waves of hate and threats against Scientologists, the church and its leadership in the hashtag name of uh, Leah Remini and, and or on her TV show and its incident incendiary uh, bigotry, including threats of bombings, arson, assassinations, and mass murder, end quote. Kind of extreme, huh? Statements on social media that Ms. Remini supports rapists. Okay. In March of 2023 alone, Twitter accounts owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants have posted over 247 false and fraudulent photoshopped images of Ms. Remini wearing apparel that says, quote, I love racists. Um, next, a January 29th, 2023 statement on Stan League, a website controlled and operated by defendants and defendants operatives that fraudulently claims that Ms. Remini is a, quote, rape apologist and, quote, obviously agrees with the actions of these men accused of rape or feels that it's not a big deal to sexually abuse women, end quote. On April 10th, 2023, tweet from Hate Monitor, a Twitter account owned, operated, and or controlled by defendants that falsely claims that Leah Remini is a bigot who inspires violent 
hate crimes and defends rapists, end quote. Remember, this is, this is, um, this is the complaint from Leo Remini. So this is her lawyers putting everything in there, which is pretty good. Uh, statements on social media and defendant run websites claiming that Ms. Remini is a religious bigot who has inspired praise of Hitler. Uh, a February 2nd, 2022 article on Stanley entitled, quote, as the world remembers the Holocaust, uh, bigot Leah Remini inspires praise of Hitler, end quote. On January 29th, 2023, statement on Stanley uh, website that maliciously and fraudulently claims that Ms. Remini is a, quote, Vicious, lying, narcissistic, deranged, demented, and dangerous bigot, end quote. I apologize for that Ms. Remini had her 18-year-old daughter involuntarily committed to a psychiatric facility, which is including a March 9th, 2023 statement made on a Twitter account operated by a Scientology operative at the behest of defendants that states, quote, I wonder where Leah's daughter is. Last time she was in New York and came back to LA and Le Leah sent her to psych and then back to New York. These false and defamatory statements were published on various social media and in a seemingly unending stream continue to be released and or republished to other social media for public consumption, as well as to third parties with whom Ms. Remini has or had business relationships. Indeed, um, defendants' defamatory statements are continuously uh, distributed via so many social media outlets, many of them with intentionally concealed identities. It would be impossible for her to track each one. That's true. Defendants published these false and defamatory statements to third parties with actual knowledge that the statements were false or with reckless disregard for whether these statements were false as part of Scientology's campaign to destroy Ms. Remini's personal and professional life. Defendants knew that publishing the statements about Ms. Remini on the internet would have a damaging impact on plaintiff's credibility and reputation. These defamatory statements were not name-calling or rhetorical hyperbole, but constitute specific acts and factual allegations that are actionable. These defamatory statements falsely associated and continue to falsely, associated, uh, falsely associate Ms. Remini with things viewed as abhorrent in this community. Defendant's decade-long crusade of abuses and attacks against Ms. Remini, which continues to present day and is expected to continue into the future without, judi without judicial action, including the defamatory statements made by defendants or defendants operatives, has subjected Ms. Remini to public contempt, ridicule, and disgrace. The defamatory statements made by defendants or defendants operatives have also injured Ms. Remini in her profession as an actress and businesswoman and have caused in the past and upon information and belief continue to cause her to lose business relationships and business opportunities. <clears throat> the publication of such defamatory statements at the behest of defendants has in fact caused damages to Ms. Remini, resulting in loss of revenue and loss and lost business opportunities and is expected to cause her loss uh, of such revenue and opportunities in the future. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for defamation and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Okay, defamation by implication. We're at count seven, defamation by implication. Plaintiffs incorporate and reallege all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth 
Kieran since 2013 and continuing to this day, defendants knowingly and willingly published or caused to be published various statements about Ms. Remini that are not true or substantially true and which could reasonably be construed as defamatory. These false statements include, but are not limited to, oh, I have to say these out loud now, um, include, but are not limited to, statements accusing Ms. Remini of inciting hate crimes. In January uh, 31st, there was an article published about that. I'm not gonna list all of these and read them. On August 4th, 2022, another article by Stan Plague. April 13th in 2023, a tweet from Hate Monitor. Feel free to read this um, yourself. A tweet dated April uh, 18th, 2023 from Hate Monitor. Um, all of these are, are defamatory types of uh, tweets against um, Ms. Remini. An unrelated, an, an undated article on um, this website owned and operated by the defendants also published some things. So we have the hate monitor, the stand league and this uh, hate, hate website that uh, they run statements on social media that Ms. Remini supports rapists. Okay. So now we have another set of statements that um, Ms. Remini uh, supports rapists um, March of 2023 over 247 false uh, images were posted a, in January 29th of 2023 and Stand League, uh, standleague.org uh, published some fraudulent cr uh, claims about her being um, an apologist. Uh, another one in April 10th, 2023 from Hate Monitor. Statements on social media and defendant-run websites claiming that Ms. Remini is a religious bigot who has inspired praise of Hitler. Okay, these are just more social media examples. In February 2nd, 2022 article from Stand Lake, January 29th. Uh, 2023. Again, these are recent uh, from Stand League. <clears throat> Ms. Remini had her 18 year old daughter involuntarily committed to a psychiatric facility, including, and this is just another one of those allegations and another example of that posting um, March 9th, 2023 statement uh, on that. Um, Let's see. On Twitter, um, the above statements were published on social media for public consumption and have created the implications that Ms. Rambini is responsible for inciting murder and other hate crimes, that she loves rapists and supports sexual abuse, that she is abusive to her daughter, and that she is a Holocaust supporter and religious bigot. These challenged statements reasonably create implications that are not true or substantially true. The implications drawn from the challenged statements convey the assertions, I'm sorry, convey the assertions of objective facts and not opinions. Plaintiff's interpretation of defendant's statements is reasonable and has created an overall impression of Ms. Remini in the matters, in the manners described. These challenged statements could reasonably be deemed as defamatory, and such statements have injured Ms. Remini's personal and professional reputation, as detailed herein. These defamatory statements and implications falsely associated and continue to falsely associate Ms. Remini with things viewed as abhorrent in the community. Defendants' decade-long crusade of abuses and attacks against Ms. Remini including the defamatory statements made by defendants or defendants operatives has subjected Ms. Remini to public contempt, ridicule, and disgrace. The defamatory statements and implications made by defendants or defendants operatives have also injured Ms. Remini in her profession as an actress and businesswoman 
and have caused her to lose business relationships and business opportunities and is expected to cause her to lose such relationships and opportunities in the future. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for defamation by implication and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. We're on count eight now. False light. Uh, I'm sorry, false light. Plaintiffs incorporate and reallege all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Since 2013 and continuing to this day, defendants knowingly and willingly published or caused to be published statements about Ms. Uh, Remini as set forth herein on social media for public consumption. Such statements and negative publicity have placed Ms. Remini before the public in uh, before the public in a false light, and that is and would be highly offensive to a reasonable person. Defendants published these false statements to third parties with actual knowledge these statements were false and with reckless disregard for whether these statements were false as part of Scientology's campaign to destroy Ms. Remini's personal and professional life. Defendants knew that publishing the statements about Ms. Remini on the internet would have a damaging impact on plaintiff's credibility and reputation. These false statements that placed Ms. Remini in a false light before the public were not name-calling or rhetorical hyperbole, but constitute specific acts and factual allegations that are actionable. These false statements falsely associated Ms. Remini with things viewed as abhorrent in the community. Defendants' decades, decade-long crusade of abuses and attacks against Ms. Remini, including the false uh, statements made by defendants or defendants' operatives has subjected Ms. Remini to public contempt, ridicule, and disgrace. The false statements made by defendants or defendants' operatives have also injured Ms. Remini in her profession as an actress and businesswoman and have caused her to lose business relationships and business opportunities. A publication of such false of such false statements at the behest of defendants has in fact caused damages to Ms. Remini, resulting in a loss of revenue and loss, um, lost business opportunities. Wherefore, plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a judgment against defendants for defamation and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Almost there. Count nine. Declaratory judgment, asking for a judgment. Okay, California Code Civil Procedure, Section uh, 1060. Plaintiffs incorporate and reallege all allegations contained in the foregoing paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Defendants maintain and implement a policy of abuse and attack against former members who speak out against Scientology. Upon departure from Scientology, an individual should not be stalked, harassed, targeted, or made to fear for their life or livelihood. Religious freedoms do not permit criminal or tortious behavior, nor may so-called uh, religious doctrine or directives shelter the commission of crimes or torts against former members who exercise their rights to disassociate from or criticize an organization which they once belonged. The abuse leveled at Ms. Remini is part of a broader policy and practice of intimidation. Ms. Remini is just one of thousands of former Scientologists who defendants have terrorized as part of their systematic practice of fair game. The implementation of the suppressive person's policy as it pertains to Ms. Remini or any other former member or perceived critic of Scientology is unlawful. Therefore, Plaintiff Remini seeks a judicial declaration that the practice of suppressive persons operations are unlawful and should be ceased immediately. Plaintiff Remini is in doubt as to her rights and privileges with respect 
to the crimes and torts being committed, being committed against her by defendants and is entitled to have such doubt removed. There is a bona fide, actual, present, and factual, I'm sorry, practical need for a declaration of the rights of Ms. Remini with respect to the practice of attacks against suppressive persons as described above. Wherefore, Plaintiff Leah Remini requests that the court enter a declaratory judgment that the defendants be prohibited from implementing the suppressive person's attack policy so that she is free from tortious and criminal conduct and award such other and further relief as it deems appropriate. Punitive damages sought against defendants and reservation of rights. Defendants are, based on information and belief, religious corporations organized under the laws of California and therefore are afforded the protection of code of civil procedure, section 425.14. Upon such time as appropriate, the plaintiff expressly reserves the right to file a motion to amend the instant uh, complaint in order to allege facts sufficient to constitute punitive damages against defendants in accordance with civil code section 3294. Uh, prayer for relief. Number one, uh, plaintiff demands a trial by jury of all issues in this action that are triable for a declaratory judgment that Scientology has violated the law uh, number three, for injunctive relief requiring Scientology to cease and desist its harassment, defamation, and un other unlawful conduct, and striking all suppressive person and fair game policies, directives, and OSA network orders. Number four, for compensatory damages in an amount to be proven at trial. Number five, Damages for the disruption of contractual relationships and lost business opportunities in an amount to be proven at trial. Number six, a punitive damages and damages for severe emotional and mental distress in an amount to be in an amount to be proven at trial. Number seven, liquidated damages for any future violations as to Ms. Remini and for such other relief as is just and proper. Uh, this uh, first amended complaint was, uh, again, it was filed on August 29th, 2023, and it looks like it was written by lawyer uh, Seth Lehrman, uh, attorney for the plaintiff. So these are the attorneys for Ms. Remini. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed this rather long court case. Um, I appreciate your patience with me when I'm reading and you're listening. Remember that you can increase the playback speed uh, to any speed that you'd like, or you can decrease it as well. And also I will have chapters um, below um, for each section if you wanna just skip to specific causes of action. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. See you soon.